To two artists of Reddit, what is your most are you sure to two you've been asked to do have done? I actually refused to do this one. An 18 year old girl came in wanting her boyfriend's name on her lower back. She had never met him, she was his prison pen pal for a month, and he was being released in a couple weeks and she wanted to get it to surprise him. No judgments on ex-cons or 18 year old girls, but I got the impression the relationship wasn't going to last. That's what Sharpie is for. An artist at the local tattoo parlor I go to tattoo the guy's battle sack all orange with an scary face on it. The guy referred to it as a sack o' lantern. Guy comes in with girlfriend, want each other's names. I protest, they insist, we know they'll get it elsewhere and I'm in a walk-in shop at the time so I say frick it let's go. Gets it across his stomach in old English. The moment where Danji yells some like, next time you'll think twice before fricking some skanky ass be behind my back and runs away. It was awkward to ask for the money. That is some of the best revenge I've ever heard. A guy came in and got his wife's name covered up with a portrait of his new girlfriend. My co-worker used part of her shirt in the picture to cover up the name. Then two months later he turned his now ex-girlfriend's portrait into a demon. I started working at another shop and him came in the same guy with a third girl and they were getting matching tattoos on their hands. When I walked to the front and saw him he totally pretended he didn't know me. Third time lucky. I have a friend with the Ice Age squirrel tattooed on his inner thigh reaching for his nuts. You're in the wrong thread, friend, because that tattoo sounds amazing. Dude came in and asked me to tattoo a portrait of his girlfriend. Only the portrait was a duck face snapchat selfie. I jokingly suggested adding her holding the phone, taking the selfie, but he thought it was a great idea. They've only been dating 6 months and he didn't tell her he was going to get it. He came back a month later to add her name above it. Should have added her snapchat username. What a pleb. A friend of mine had the anorexia symbol tattooed on her neck. I know it's supposed to be a symbol of recovery, I think. It's hard to say with all the pro honor stuff, but now when she looks in the mirror all it does is remind her of her disorder and how horrible it makes her feel. You should recommend getting a cover up tattoo if it makes her feel that bad. My ex tattooist tried to convince me to get a broken condom with the word whoops above it, obviously I declined. He ended up tattooing it on his own upper arm with his son's birth date below. Mate had to tattoo a picture of Bill Cosby to her dudes back in the mid 2000s. Poor guy probably regrets that now. Zip zop zoobity bop. My artist told me a story about a guy who was balding and wanted his bald spot tattooed over in black. My artist colored the bald spot in with a sharpie and told the guy to come back after he'd showed it to his wife. Guy didn't come back. One of the artists at a shop here has the word hair tattooed in his bald spot. Much better idea. My tattoo artist said some dude on crack came in asking for Lisa Simpson nude in a very sexual position. She told him to frick right off. Was in booking a tattoo one day and a woman came in to buy her soon to be 16 year daughter a tattoo. Owner and tattooist says, sure we can sort something out. What is she wanting? Mother says she wants to get the playboy bunny on the inside of her wrist. Artist refused and said, I don't want to be responsible for something so cliche and visible on such a young girl. There was an argument, but the woman leaves yelling she is going elsewhere where her money is good enough. He had strong views on neck, face and hand tattoos. Didn't stop him from doing a fast food character orgy on a guy's back though. Asked my artist, 25 plus years experience this during my last piece. His most notable was a guy who wanted a solid bright blue speedo tattooed on. Over every square inch that a speedo would cover. Said it was super awkward as it was one of his first tattoos but he made good money off of it. Nothing has really phased him since. I know this guy who tattooed a cutie mark on a guy's ass. A cutie mark is the marking the ponies have on their rear in the My Little Pony series. I tattooed FCK on a woman's hip. She still loves it, but it makes me really uncomfortable when I think about her at the beach. I also had a friend want me to tattoo his girlfriend's name in old English on his arm. I said no girlfriends. He was mad, because I was his friend and should do it. I said that's exactly why I wouldn't do it. If they don't last, I'm still his friend. It's incredibly hard to tell someone you won't do their tattoo, because their relationship might not last. Newsflash. He got our competitor to do the tattoo. 
Breaking news, they aren't together anymore. Another guy, when I first started out, wanted to get the Nazi hunter image. It's a cartoon guy clubbing a swastika. Even though it's an anti-racism image, he still would have looked like he had a giant swastika on his chest from 10 feet away and would spend the rest of his life explaining it. I decided to not do the tattoo. Some guy came in and told me he wanted a picture of Monica Lewinsky on his lower stomach. I swear to god that guy is regretting it rn. There's no way he isn't that insane haha. <laughs> guy came into the shop I work at wanting a cover up of a previous regrettable tattoo. Pretty normal until he casually mentioned it's on his willy, and it's a red rocket. None of the dudes in the shop wanted to cover it up or even see it, only person who stepped up was one of the female artists. She was like, I don't think I have a willy tattoo for my portfolio, so frick it, let's cover it up. The only possible way to cover it up was the ad so much black work, so she freehand drew a tuxedo onto his schlong. Dude ended up with a dapper willy and he was happy with it. Weirdest day at work ever. <laughs> Last year, while doing a guest spot in Portugal, I had a guy come in while he was on holiday for his stag party. The guy wanted all the names of his friends tattooed on his ass cheeks. 13 names on each cheek, and 3 of his mates wanted to sign their own names. Sure buddy. Sure ha 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 ha. There was an 85 year old woman who came into my tattoo artist shop, saying exactly I want a freaking skull with freaking daggers and fire my artist said frick yeah and now she is an 85 year old grandma with skull and daggers on her chest. I was a shop girl, so it was my job to get everything set up for the tattoos. I had a couple come in and want each other's names tattooed on them. Okay no problem. At this shop we had a rule that anything involving words has to have the person sign a copy of the lettering to make sure everything is spelled correctly. So they write their names down the artists draw up the lettering and I give them the copies to double check spelling and sign off on it. The woman looks at the man's name. He wrote down his name to give to the artist and says it's spelled wrong. We double check and that's how he spelled it and he looks at it and says it's right. And they argue about this. I go back and look at how it is spelled on his it and sure enough it's spelled wrong. So he decides maybe it is spelled wrong. And the artist Ray draws it. On all his paperwork he had spelled his name wrong. The way he had written it for the artist. His name is pretty common. I think he just really didn't know how to spell his name. This was a couple probably in their late 20s. Early 30s with a few kids together. Guy came in and asked for a bottle of Syringa with little wings tatted on his back. We had this lovely exchange student come into the studio for about a year to get all sorts of piercings and then the day finally came that he turned 18. So asked to sit down and a chat with him about what he wanted. Now the way he asked me made me think that it was going to be this big elaborate design. He asked for a maths equation on his foot. He wanted 3 plus 4 equals 8. I cautiously asked that he knew that was the incorrect answer to the equation. His response was oh yeah I know, I just think it'd make a funny tattoo. So yeah, that and another time I tattooed Scooby Doo and Shaggy on a guy's bum cheeks. Have a photo if people are interested. A man came into the shop my husband works at on his 18th birthday and got a pentagram with a goat on the front of his throat. First tattoo in a very visible spot that is satanic. I don't know that kid but I'm pretty sure he's regretting that decision. My husband refused to do this tattoo but someone else in the shop did. On another note my white trash biological father had let's frick tattooed on his hands when he laced his finger together. I never knew what they said when I was a kid. I finally realized at his funeral. I'm pretty sure he got it in prison. I've tattooed a guy's current wife's name on him. In the same session covered up his previous wife's name. And he also showed me another different previous wife's name he had on him. He didn't want to cover that one though, she must have not been that bad. We also had this couple come in all the time to get tattooed at the first shop I worked at. The guy would come in sometimes with a side girl and buy her tattoos, sometimes with his fiancé. After they were married his fiancé wanted me to tattoo their wedding date on her wrist. I felt really weird trying to talk her out of it while not feeling like it was my place to tell her about this guy's behavior. I ended up doing it for her. And a year later she came in to get a red line tattooed through the date. One of my dad's friends got a Gary Glitter tattoo. Back when he was popular. Regretting that big portrait of a pedo on his arm now that he is 60. 
Friend wanted angel wings tattooed on her back and asked me to go since I was the only person she knew with tattoos. We walk into a pretty well known tattoo shop in La and she explains to the artist what she wants. As she explains it gets even more elaborate with the wings starting to decay the farther down her back they went and the artist shows us some pretty sweet wings he'd done before. He explains how it will be done. He'd do the outline first and after a few weeks she could come back and he's start the detail work. Fast forward to 3 days later and she's topless lying on his chair bed and he's laying a stencil down. He asks her what other tattoos she has besides this one and she tells him that this will be her first one. Tattoo guy's face drops instantly and he starts saying how he's going to end up tattooing some of the most painful parts you could tattoo. The ribs mostly. And he asks if she can handle it. She says yes and after a little more talking it happened. She cannot take the pain at all. She's crying and griping the cushion like she's about to die. Artist looks at me and his face reads like, is she really going to do this the entire time? After half an hour of tattooing with the occasional break he says he can't deal with her screaming in the shop so he stops. He had probably 10% of the outline done on the right wing. We leave with another appointment set so another person could ray help her with the tattoo and make it something smaller. I didn't go back but she went with two female friends and from what I heard was another 10 minutes of tattooing she had a nice wave outline on her back. Going for an almost full back tattoo as her first tattoo, and a very cliche one. She's very lucky that the guy stopped, and she has a smaller one instead. Tattoo artists of Reddit, who was your worst tattoo virgin? Had a customer that wanted a little watermelon slice on his thigh. Cool. 5-10 minutes nice and easy for a first tattoo. Nope. On the third line I hear a weird little low pitched moan. Looked up and his head flipped back and the rest of him followed. When he woke up on the floor to three guys trying to pull him back up he said something along the lines of WTF why are you touching me that's gay been like 3-4 years since then and he still hasn't come back to get it finished Lumeo. WTF why are you touching me that's gay. If guys helping another guy up is gay. I can only guess this guy has some slight insecurities. Girl comes in to get her ex-boyfriend's name tattooed as a tramp stamp. Comes in with friends and proceeds to scream throughout the process of doing the outline and she leaves with a half outline of her ex's name. Kid who wanted to get a full sleeve as his first ever tattoo. Convinced him to get a smaller tattoo for his first ever. He proceeded to throw up after. Now this sounds like an exaggeration. 5 seconds. I made a similar mistake for my first tattoo. Got a half sleeve on my upper arm. After the line work was done, I had to take a break. Didn't puke, though. The rest, a complex, solid black design. I had to have broken up into a few separate sessions because it hurt far more than I thought it would. Fortunately, my artist was a son. I dated a tattoo artist for a couple years and spent a good chunk of time at the shop. One time, a girl we knew from school came in for a large tattoo on her ribs. I think it was flowers. Anyway, everything is set up, she's stenciled and laying on the chair just chatting and waiting. As soon as the needle hits her skin, she starts screaming bloody murder, boning and begging him to stop. So he stops, shocked, and she tells him, in her normal voice, to ignore her and keep going. Screaming fit proceeds. Every so often he'd stop to check she was alright and she'd respond in a normal, cheerful tone that she's excited to see how it turns out, etc. Needle hit skin. Back to screaming like she's being eaten by a pack of wolves. I watched a couple people walk in the shop and turn and walk right back out. I'm surprised cops didn't show up. Anyway I think he only got the outlines and some shading done before he couldn't deal with it anymore and said something about scheduling another session because he had another client coming in. She never came back to get it finished. So weird. This type of story seems to be recurring in this thread. It's like people have a split personality when it comes to pain or something. A friend who had never had a tattoo before wanted one on her ankle and was adamant about that. I told her several times that the ankle is a very not fun location, and asked her if maybe she'd prefer the shoulder instead. She insisted on the ankle. Okay then. The moment the needle touched her she hollered. You sure you want to keep going I asked. She said yes. That was the loudest appointment I ever had but to her credit she made it through. Oh wow, reading this thread is bringing up some repressed client memories. My worst one by far, though, was about 5 years ago when I was apprenticing in a college town. 
This girl came in with her boyfriend for a traditional butterfly above her elbow. I was still super new so it took me way longer than it should have, maybe 2 hours. I lay her down on her stomach with her arm bent at her side. This is relevant later. Anyway, we start tattooing and within maybe 10 minutes she starts getting a string of texts from her freshman friends. Telling her they're essentially ousting her from their group and they don't want her to contact them again. Super mean stuff. Obviously she is upset, as she's relating all this to her BF. She starts crying, then full on sobbing. I asked her if she wanted to stop, but she insisted on me continuing, and I felt too awkward to counter her. She continued to sob on and off for probably another hour, while I just kept plugging away at this dumb little tattoo. At this point she had cried so much that her tears had gathered where her arm was pressed against the massage table and had started to spill over into my lap. So I'm feeling uncomfortable as heck, and now also damp. Then, as I'm within 30 minutes or so of finishing, she begins whimpering, then moaning, loudly. At one point she tells the BF this is more intense than anal and I wanted to die. As soon as I finished and checked her out, my co-workers, who had all been waiting on me to close were like what the actual frick was going on, and why did you keep going but in the moment, all I could think was to finish the tattoo ASAP. To her credit, she came back, a year later, and told me she had been too embarrassed to come back but loved the butterfly and wanted another tattoo from me. Her second session was pleasant and without incident. LOL you deserve a medal for sitting through all of that. What a 180. I'm far too late to this thread for my story, but I hope somebody else enjoys it. This older lady, maybe late 50s early 60s comes to our shop. She's quite timid as she approaches the front desk and I say hello and ask what we can do for her. We'll call her Ab. Ab, I've never had a tattoo before. Me. That's fine. It's not as scary as you think. What was it you wanted doing? Ab, well, my boyfriend is finally letting me have a tattoo. Me. 0.0. Ab, but I wanted just something small and out the way, so if I change my mind I don't have to look at it too often. Me. Okay. Fair enough. What was it you wanted? Ab, I want Andy's B written on my vagina. Nope. Nope nope nope. We didn't do the tattoo. It was either some horribly abusive partner that wanted her branded with his name, or some BDSM kink that I didn't consent to being part of. Frick that. Fricking you. This girl's first tattoo, and my first paying customer, I tattooed people for free during my apprenticeship. She wants a star outline on the side of her heel below the ankle. She's a bit nervous, so I allow two of her friends to come in the room with us. I start the tattoo and immediately she jerks away super hard. I warn her not to do that and try to relax. We start again and she jerks her foot. The two lines I've done now look like crap and I'm already pee freaking out inside. I get her two friends to help hold down her foot and she continues to jerk around and at one point kicks Emmy right in the jaw. Needless to say her tattoo looked like crap and I was crestfallen. I called my mentor after work crying that I ruined my first tattoo on a client and she kicked me in the face to which he said wait, what? Nah frick that, it's not your fault. I'll see you tomorrow at work. Been tattooing 13 years now and still love every minute. Got way crazier stories under my belt since that kick in the face. You are not allowed to end with got way crazier stories under my belt. Please share some more. I was the tattoo virgin. Went in for my first piece. 5 plus hours. Was obviously nervous and I'm not that great with needles. But as soon as we started I was like oh this is way easier than I built it up to be. I was feeling the pain but knew I'd be able to commit. About 20 minutes later, I start to feel really dizzy. My vision is going so I sit up. She stops immediately, and she's talking to me but I can barely hear her. The world is closing in, and it's only getting worse. I think she asks if I'd like to go to the bathroom, but I know I will make it 1.5 steps before passing out if I stand up. I can't tell her this because my brain is not working and speech is not an option. And then I start gagging. My artist is scrambling for something to help me, but she is not fast enough. I vomit into my mask, my hands, all over my dress, into my hair, onto the floor. It's a mess. I'm a mess. I immediately feel better and go to the bathroom to clean up whilst this poor artist is wiping up the rest. I come back, still stinking of vomit. I offer to take my dress off and literally sit there in my underwear while she finishes. 
She completes the tattoo like a champion she sits with me in Vomidora for another 5 hours. I am mortified and make sure I tip extra for the inconvenience. But the tat is stunning. So it was worth every minute. I'm bringing a bucket next time. Just in case. Had a 19 year old lad in the studio. He wanted Laura in large letters on his forearm. I took my time to quiz him. Turns out Laura was his sweetheart. I also spent a long time explaining that tattoos are for life. And girlfriends come and go. He remained adamant. And clearly explained that if I didn't do it. He had a friend with a tattoo gun who would do it. So I did it. Wrapped it up and explained after care. As he left I checked the time. Great 22 minutes to my next client. 22 minutes later my client turned up on perfect time. Followed less than a minute later by Mr. Lover boy. Apparently he'd met Laura at the park who instantly dumped him for being so freaking stupid. It would appear she wasn't as in love with him as he assumed. 22 minutes from tattoo to requesting a cover up. That's how I expect 100% of all GFBF tattoo stories to end up. Have to. I did piercings. But my friend was an artist at the shop we worked at. Had a girl come in. No ink. No piercings. She wanted to get no joke. Daddy's girl is a tramp stamp. She was in tears moments into the tattoo. Like hysterical crap. She suffered through altogether probably 25 minutes. And walked out with girl right above her waistline. 10 stroke 10 hilarious. The other was a guy. He had a few small tats on his arms. Nothing crazy. He was also one of the I watch UFC and wear tap out. Don't frick with me types. He wanted a pretty large tribal chess piece. Collarbone to collarbone. He was told that we recommended a couple of sessions. Them shoots is going to hurt. And this is a lot of outline and a lot of shading. He insisted no. He could sit. He ended up fainting toward the end of his outline. I worked there for roughly a year after and he never came back to get it finished. He tapped out. One shop I worked at we had a couple come in on the day we did $100 2 inch by 2 inch tattoos. They both were getting these small triceratops outline tattoos behind their ears. Nothing too crazy or detailed so maybe about 15 minutes each in the chair at most. The guy is losing his mind. He's hyperventilating. Laughing. Jumping up and down and yelling questions at all of us. Visually very nervous. He tells one of our apprentices that this is his first tattoo and keeps asking them how bad it hurts over and over again. The owner went into the back and grabbed an ammonia packet. Worried the guy would pass out the second needle touched skin. Turns out it was this couple's first date. He had told her he was impulsive and she tried to call his bluff and suggested they get matching tattoos. To his credit he got the tattoo and didn't pass out. Paid for them both too. They later got married due to a series of escalating dares. Not a tattoo artist but my friend tells this story had to share here. So he went to the pharmacy to get some prescription filled in North Carolina. They tell him it's going to take about 1 hour to fill in to come back later. So he walks out of the strip mall and the next place over is a tattoo shop. He goes in and asks for a random tattoo. They tell him it's going to take about 15 minutes to do the drawing and about. And about 30 to tattoo it on him. He asks what they can do right now instantly. And they tell him they can pierce his nipples. Within one hour he gets both nips pierced. A pretty sweet tattoo and his prescription filled all in one regular Tuesday afternoon. Now that's productive. Not the worst client. But just an unfortunate event. The apprentice at my shop who had only been tattooing for a little under a year was tattooing this girl's wrist recently. Her first tattoo the word undefeated. It gets the tattoo. It goes smoothly. She likes it. Walks to the lobby. Shows her dad. He likes it. Walks back to get bandaged up. Gets bandaged. They walk back to the counter as he's explaining aftercare she blacks out. Falls back hits her head on a giant painting hanging on the wall. An Ed Hardy original. The painting falls. Glass breaks. He runs over picks her up and is checking the back of her head. Realizes a giant piece of glass had punctured her shoulder trap. EMT comes. Tell her she needs stitches. They end up having to take her to the emergency room where she got 6 stitches. The next week the girl brought him a giant tub of cookies. She wasn't the worst. But it was an incredibly unfortunate experience for the both of them. His first time having someone pass out and her being defeated. She can claim the tattoo is undefeated. It took her out. Buckle up. This one might get a bit long. In around 1999-2000, a 
I had only been tattooing for about a year or so. I had a lady in her 40s come in for her first tattoo. A walk-in butterfly on her left shoulder blade. She was a server at a sketchy strip club in town and was pretty haggard. She also had her 16 year old son with her. We get about 20 minutes into what should be about a 45 minute tattoo and she says she needs a break. Now I know better than to leave a client alone when they need a break, but I was pretty green, so I stepped out for a smoke. When I came back in, she was standing up, bent 90 degrees forward at the waist, with her face on my workstation. As I get closer, I see that she's standing in a puddle of her own urine, and is passed out standing up. She's leaning forward with enough weight on her face to keep her from falling to the floor. Her son is frozen in his chair and doesn't say a word. Fortunately, she's wearing a skirt, so she didn't get her clothes all soaked. I get her conscious again and she says she needs to go to the bathroom to clean up. During the approximately 20 minutes she's in the bathroom, I mopped my floor a couple times and got everything good to go if she was still feeling up to finishing. Again, now I'd just tell her to come back another day, but I was pretty new. I just wanted to finish, get paid, and get her the heck out. Anyway, after 20 minutes or so, she comes out of the bathroom and says don't worry, I cleaned the bathroom. Frick, what did she do to the bathroom that would require her to clean it? She says she wants to finish the tattoo, so she sits, and I start working again. About 5 minutes in, I notice something on the outside of her knee. I look again and see that it's a little chunk of crap, not on the front of the kneecap, but on the side. I'm thinking how does that even happen as I look away from the turd. I see her 16 year old son just noticed it too. He looked at me, and then at the floor for the remainder of the tattoo. I didn't know if I should say anything about the poop, or just finish the tattoo, get her out of there, and proceed to drown myself in a bottle to try and kill the memory. I decide not to say anything partially to save her kid more embarrassment. Anyway, I wrap it up, get paid, get her out of there, and proceed to the bathroom to see what she did to it. The bathroom had a urinal, and two separate stalls. There were circular crap smears over the entire floor, and crappy toilet paper in both toilets, like she blew up right inside the door and got down on her knees in a desperate attempt to clean it up. That must have been how she got the turd on the knee. I'll still curious how it ended up on the outside of the knee. I'm still curious if she ever noticed it there. And I'm still amazed that I didn't quit tattooing right then and there. Feel terrible for that kid. Had someone come in asking if they can bring their emotional support animal. Usually this is kind of iffy because it could be a sanitation risk. But we made exemptions for good dogs. Found out the emotional support animal was a 3 foot long snake. Turned down instantly, so men are people passing out, high on painkillers before their appointment, taking continuous videos and posting how ink they were with their new ankle beach wave, or even one person tipping me in expired subway coupons. Just be cool and calm while getting tattooed and everything will go smoothly. When I went to get my very first tattoo there was a girl ahead of me getting her first as well. I was already a little nervous because I didn't know what to expect, but I started out small so I didn't think it could be that bad. Apparently the girl ahead of me had the same thought but her pain tolerance was almost non-existent. She ended up throwing up absolutely everywhere. I stood there in horror, not only because of the bath but because I was next. I thought, is that going to be me turns out I have a pretty high pain tolerance, at least in comparison to her. Same here, I get into the chair, have this annoying irritating feeling for 20 seconds then the endorphins kick in and I get super relaxed, it would have been an addiction for me if I wasn't so poor haha. <laughs> Not an artist, but I'm a receptionist at a pretty popular tattoo shop in my town. I've seen quite a few people who had no business getting tattooed, but by far my favorite was this one guy who wanted to get some script tattooed behind his ear. He had come in before to get priced out, but absolutely refused to make an appointment and drop a deposit. He came back a few days later as a walk-in, so we squeezed him in that day. He was a mess getting done lol. Shaking, sweating and basically crying in the chair. The tattoo itself took maybe 15 minutes. Well the reason why this dude refused to put a deposit down was because he planned on getting tatted and leaving without paying. As soon as the artist put Saniderm on his tattoo, he jumped up out of the chair and bolted for the front door, then promptly passed out as he ran through the lobby Lomfeo. 
He ended up breaking his nose as he hit the ground, and we called the cops. The best part was watching this dude cry like a baby because he was just a few days from getting out of the military and local PD notified his command. Best shift ever. Close second was the newly turned 18 yo girl who legitimately wanted a dong tramp stamp tattooed on her. Yes, she was sober. No, we didn't tattoo her. Both idiots but at least she had a chance of growing out of hers. Mine was a young lady who wanted a semicolon tattoo on her wrist. Maybe one eye and x 2 inches. Black ink. No preference on font. Easy enough. And I had the stencil all ready to go before she even came in. I was expecting a 15 minutes job max. So I gave her a pretty cheap quote. Anyway. She turns up for her apt and she's very nervous. I do my normal. It's about as painful as a cat scratch. Nothing to panic about speech. And she informs me that she's already taken a strong painkiller. And would like the specialist numbing spray as well. UHH. Okay. That's an extra 30 pounds. She agrees. Spray goes on. Stencil goes on. We're ready. I don't even make contact with her skin before she starts making a very loud, high pitched whine. I try and calm her down again. And tell her that she can have a few mins to get her courage up if she wants. But 99% of the time, the anxiety of getting a tattoo is usually worse than actually getting one. Bearing in mind, the parlor at the time had 4 other artists, all with customers, all staring at her. She just kept putting it off. She'd say okay, I'd turn on the gun, and she'd freak out again. After an hour I told her that I was expecting another client, and she could reschedule if she wanted. She just bolts out the door, didn't even pay for the numbing spray. To this day, I can't quite believe how dramatic she made the whole thing. Yeah I agree on the anticipation part. I've been tattooed like 8 times and to this day with get just a tinge hyped before but the second it starts and just chatting with the artist or a friend or on my phone or whatnot, that 5 minutes before there was a rush. Edit. Thanks for the love. By far my most popular post. Ranker even picked this thread up for an article. I'll take this one. I had a client who got a Jesus fish with Greek letters on his chest. I put the stencil on. He looks down says looks good and we do the tattoo. Guy sits like a champ through his entire first tattoo. I finish up after about 45 minutes. He checks it out in the mirror and immediately goes pale. Starts to sweat and sits down. Dude looks at me and says it's backwards all shook. I look at his tattoo, look at him on the floor, look at the mirror and tell the guy I'm gonna take a photo of it for you to see, because you don't know how mirrors work. A couple minutes go by as I'm handing the dude paper towels. The guy stands up all quick and tries to play it off like he was just messing with me even though for a minute there, there was a corpse on my studio floor. Not an artist, just a customer but I overheard this. I'm sitting waiting for my artist to finish up working on her current client, just leafing through flashes and other artwork. I notice one of the other artists was putting a large rose skull stencil on a guy. He finished placing the stencil and asked his client if it was okay. The client quite seriously said wow, that was much easier and quicker than I thought it was going to be. No pain at all. His artist just stared at him but I laughed assuming he was joking. He gave me a why the frick are you laughing look. He actually meant it. There's a few different ways you can go with worst. Is worst most reactive? Is worst most picky and unreasonable? I've been pretty lucky in the grand scheme of things. My worst most reactive annoying client was this dude who was very clearly a drug addict. He came in, wanted a simple tribal tattoo on his stomach. I saw sure no problem but he starts haggling me about the price. At first it was $400. Then he said no more than $200. We finally settled on $300 after about 20 minutes of back and forth. I get all set up. We start the tattoo. Within a minute he says he needs to stand up. That's he's in too much pain and needs to walk around. He walks around for about 2 or 3 minutes. Then lays back down. Gets tattooed for another couple minutes and then same thing. He does this constantly throughout the entire tattoo. During this time he was constantly scratching his head, twitching all over and complaining loudly. But the worst part wasn't the fact that this 2 hour tattoo turned into almost 4 hours. The worst was that he kept going out for smoke breaks, but kept only taking 2 or 3 puffs, putting the cherry out and then putting the smoke back in his pocket. So all I could smell the entire time was musty cigs. 
It was freaking disgusting. The cigarette smelled old. If you've ever smelled old cigs you know what I'm talking about. He also kept putting it in the pocket that was right beside my face. No chance I'm haggling with somebody who's about to permanently mark my body. I once had a client who called me up panicking because he thought his skin was melting off. I used Saniderm which of course ended up with liquid on the inside as is normal. Dude calls me screaming on the phone terrified bro what did you do? My skin is melting. I had to calm him down and explain what Saniderm is. I asked my tattoo artist about the shop and he went into this story about how this older lady came in to get her feet done. She did fine but afterward she was hitting on him cause she just assumed he was into feet now. He said she straddled him and offered him sex or something. It's not the worst, but I love this one. At the expense of my very good client, I generally use this story to help noobs ease into my chair more comfortably. So it was his first and I'm getting my stencil prepped. He was so nervous. He was basically white. Kept asking if he was good. Yeah he was okay, I guess. Place the stencil on him and ask him to take a look. He looks at his arm and immediately passes out in the chair lol. He's sliding out of the chair. We get him back up and he comes too. He got over it. Eventually and has his sleeve. I was getting lettering and dude finally got to my spine. He asked me how I was doing I said a little lightheaded. But keep going. He said nope we are stopping for 15 minutes. I guess he's had a bunch of people pass out on him. This thread helped me make up my mind. I'm gonna get the tattoo I should have gotten 30 years ago with my best friend but I wasn't sure I'd still want it when I was old well I'm old. And I wish I had done it. Time to do it. He died less than a year later. R.I.P. Jürgen. Good for you. I hope it goes well and Jürgen finds a way to let you know he's stoked you finally did it. A couple of years ago, I had a girl come in for what was supposed to be a simple little seahorse. It was only about 4-5 inches long. This was going to be her first tattoo and she told me that she had a severe fear of blood. That she always passed out whenever she sees blood or even thinks she's going to see blood. After that, I should have never agreed to tattoo her. But she said that she wanted to do this so that she could get over her phobia. Well, the outline itself should have taken me about 20 minutes or so. But it took me well over an hour and a half to get through. This girl passed out about a dozen times. And after each time, I would have to revive her, get her some water, hold cold compresses to her forehead and back of the neck, elevate her feet and get her calmed down. And no, you can't just keep working on someone after they pass out. And I couldn't just leave her with a couple of random lines that would look awful. I had to finish the outline. The worst part was that I had gotten what I think was food poisoning the night before. So I was just going to do this little tattoo and then go home and get some rest because I still felt awful. I didn't think I'd ever get that outline done. I feel I might have been up there on someone's worst tattoo virgins. I was visiting family in Hawaii and decided to finally pull the trigger on getting a tattoo. It's a tribal armband but with a bit of a video game reference thrown in there. Aren't I original? Anyways. Being freshly out of college and 21 at the time, I get s face the entire night before with family alone because I liked being drunk. Wake up the next morning, day scheduled for the tattoo. Feeling amazing because I was 21 and never got a hangover. Was going to take about 1.5 hours to do the tattoo. No biggie. My father was in the room cringing the whole time. But the pain really wasn't bad. Only stung when it was on the more tender part of the inner arm. Anyways. 45 minutes in. My stomach grumbles. I have the whiskey shoots. Bad. I ask the dude if I can use the bathroom. He's cool and I head in there. I proceed to wreck that place. With a stench so foul. I came out. And all of the other artists and their customers had left the building. Smaller studio. And my guy and father were just laughing their asses off. I had to sit the next hour and 15 minutes, had to extend the time because you can't have a giggly artist sticking you, in pure embarrassment. Still have the tat. Still have the shame. Would be kinda weird if you didn't still have the tat NGL. Not an artist, but I overheard this interaction when I was waiting to get a tattoo in Bali. The client was a first timer who was there with her mom. To paraphrase, her request was something along the lines of, yeah, so I don't really know what I want but I'm thinking something really cool and artsy. I like animals but it doesn't have to be an animal. 
just something really cool that kind of captures me as a person. But like whatever you think, I trust you. The artist, who was a pretty no-nonsense Ukrainian woman, basically said okay, how about you think about it and come back when you know what you want. Bye bye. A Ukrainian artist in Indonesia conducting business in English. What a fascinating world. To two artists of Reddit, what is your worst client story? Not the worst but still sticks with me. In 1995, my client had committed suicide. In the grieving process, his three surviving sisters wanted to get tattooed by me to help connect with their brother who had passed. It was a weird day, not because of the request or the fact that I was doing memorial tattoos, but because you could feel the tension between the family. My client's death had prematurely brought these siblings together and somehow, spending the afternoon together in a tattoo shop, they had started to forgive each other and their underlying resentments had started to wash away. It was really great to watch these adult children bond again. So lastly, I tattooed a new boyfriend of one of the sisters. He wasn't getting a memorial tattoo, he was getting a bullhead. This was the first time he had met the extended family. While I tattooed the boyfriend, the girls returned from shopping at a head shop next door. They were showing off some shirts they bought while the boyfriend was in the chair. He saw Nirvana shirt that the girls just purchased and said, Hey, he blew his head off too. And I sat for 39 more minutes in complete discomfort. I love when this question comes up. I managed a shop and occasionally we'd get Nazis and jugglers. At a friend's shop whenever Nazis would come in asking for swastikas he'd tell them $3000 for your chest but $50 for your hands or face and it had to be done by the guy who was from the Philippines who tattooed at their shop. This is freaking genius. Not an artist but I spent a lot of time in shops. This one girl came in one day to get an outline for this absolutely massive back piece. Wings or some crap. The artist who's doing the piece keeps telling us how hot she is, and how excited he is to do it. She comes in, and she is gorgeous. She takes her shirt completely off and unhooks her bra. The artist shoots us all this creeper grin. Then he starts the first line. This girl starts full on screaming. I've never heard anything like it. Just a continuous scream the entire time the needle is touching her skin. Then every 10 seconds she would decide that she had had enough, and without warning, she would try to wriggle away. Each time the guy would almost freak up his line and freak out. Cut to- She's crying and topless on the ground with the artist screaming at her about how he's never going to be able to finish. And if she doesn't stop he's kicking her out. He had barely finished a single feather. The girl promises to be better and lays down. The guy starts the gun again and is about to start when she lets out another scream. He hasn't even touched her yet. He slowly takes off his gloves, packs up his kit and tells the girl to get the frick out. Holy crap, that was a roller coaster read. I was in a shop with a friend who was getting some dumb nautical stars tattooed around his elbow. He was standing up and getting the stencils lined up properly and he locked his knees out. He hadn't eaten anything at all and promptly passed out, smashing his forehead on the counter on his way down. He bled everywhere and then bad mouthed the shop like crazy because he was embarrassed. Because apparently it was their fault that he can't stand without nearly killing himself. We're not friends any longer. He was definitely that artist's worst client. I worked in a shop for nearly 10 years and only had to throw out a couple of people. Dude came in with his girlfriend and 16 year old daughter. He decides on what he wants and runs to the gas station before getting started. While the artist was doing his thing the guy would have his girlfriend bring in his drink for him so he could take a couple sips. He was also talking about pimping her out after he got his tattoo because he wanted to recoup his costs. This seemed a little awkward with the teen right there but, whatever. By the way, tattoo artists aren't therapists and they usually aren't degenerate hedonists who revel in your debauchery. We judge you just as much as any other stranger you may meet but don't say anything because you've given us money and we want our product to look good. So he's working on plans to pimp out his girlfriend and keeps sipping on his drink every few minutes. About halfway through he starts saying the tattoo doesn't look right. Artist explains that that's because it isn't finished. He becomes more belligerent and it hits me that he isn't just drinking soda so I tell her she can't take him any more drinks. The artist is pee but just wants to finish the piece and the dude is getting more pee each time I remind him that he isn't getting any more to drink while he's in our shop. Finally, with a half finished tattoo, he decides to let us know he is going to kick all of our asses. 
I think he went for his drink first because he walked out into the lobby area and was looking around while I grabbed the homping stick and helped the artist run him out and lock the door. The guy is outside yelling while the artist is on the phone with the cops. Girlfriend is saying she feels like we are kidnapping her and the teen is obviously very embarrassed and occasionally mumbling that everyone is stupid. Explained to girlfriend that she can leave but dude isn't coming back in without getting his wig split so we let her out when guy had wandered around a corner. I apologized to the teen on the way out for her unfortunate home life. Dude would occasionally call to let us know he was going to come back and shoot us all. But after a few weeks that stopped. And that's my story. The Homping Stick. Years ago when I took to the shop I worked at Friday night around midnight. Shop closed at 2am. Man comes in with some friends and one woman. Guy is hanging all over this woman and most are pretty tipsy if not drunk. Nothing new for a late Friday night. Guy wants it to two of the woman's name. Brandy. On his dong. We all say no. He's pretty adamant he's not leaving without getting that tattoo. Shawbound son says he will do it double the cost. Flate rate of $125. Guy agrees. Gets his tattoo the woman loves it they leave. Next morning get to the shop around 10 to open up and start cleaning the place guy from last night is outside pacing in front of the shop. We walk up and he starts telling us how badly he needs us to cover that tattoo up. Tell him we can't the location is too sensitive and it would need to heal before we do anything or it'd look like ground beef. Doesn't care needs it done ASAP. Ask why? Dude was getting married later that day and the girl from the night before, the one whose name was on his junk, was a stripper for his bachelor party. We use Vaseline to help the needle glide over the skin and to stop the ink from spreading over the stencil and surface of the skin. I keep the Vaseline on the back of my left hand whilst I tattoo with my right. Client reaches across, dabs a goddang mother fricking finger in my Vaseline, then proceeds to moisturize her lips. I was too stunned to say anything other than look up and slowly shake my head whilst in the calmest of voices saying number. We don't do that. I imagine that was said in the most parenting voice possible. So I was doing some after hours work for trade on this dude and his wife, half sleeves for a handful of pistols and rifles. Transferred ownership ahead of time legally because, Canada. So I've already got the items and can't back out. First sit, guy is a total B, like, constantly moving and complaining, wants to take a smoke break every 15 minutes, etc. So it's a little unsurprising when he asks if he can take some 8 of an anti-anxiety medication for next time. Thinking that he meant like 1-2 pills, and having never heard of anyone abusing them before, I said sure, my mistake. Second sit, wife drops him off and then he takes like 5-6 pills, then another 5-6 pills right before we start. It's about this time that I recommend maybe he should go a little lighter. Nope. Dude just keeps popping pills like candy, until he's basically a zombie. We take a break and he hobble shuffles to the bathroom, comes back with his pants half off and spattered in pee stains. Then he goes to take more pills and drops his pill canister scattering tiny pills everywhere and I get to watch while he picks them up in slow motion. Slobber speaking, I'm sorry man, please don't hate me, I'm well past the point where I would have kicked any other client out. But I technically still owe him several hours and just wanted to get it over with. So for some reason we keep going. Eventually he passes out and after making sure he was breathing ok etc. I just lean down on his arm to keep him still and I plow on for another few hours while he drifts in and out of consciousness. Asking me crap like if I want to go to a rub and tug with him after. You ever been to a rub and tug uh? No man. It's a massage and they jerk you off after uh. Yeah. I know wanna go right now um. Yeah, they aren't together anymore and I still tattoo her semi-regularly. Not a tattoo artist, but while getting my tattoo on my back, had to take my shirt off. The tattoo artist wouldn't stop hitting on me, as the session was coming to an end. He said I've got your number already. Mind if I call you I still had my shirt off. He was still tattooing my back. So if I said no I was afraid he would screw it up. So I said sure. I had to explain to my now husband why my tattoo artist wouldn't stop calling me. Another girl posted a negative review a month or so later saying the guy hit on her while she was getting tattooed. 
She said no, and he did a sloppy job. LOL. I spent the better part of the workday free handing and outlining a dragon back piece on a woman in her early 20s. She had several pieces on her back she had received from a kitchen wizard that we were covering as well so that raised the difficulty level a couple notches. Her boyfriend and best friend hung out, chatted and watched movies all evening while we worked. All in all not a bad time. Until it was time to pay. As we finished up and put the bandage on she turned to me and said, So I get paid next Tuesday. Is it okay if I come back then and pay you I laughed because obviously she was joking. She had to be joking. She better be joking. When I realized she wasn't I said, No, that's not how this works. Somebody is going to pay before any of you leave. She turned to her boyfriend and asked, You've got this. Right he laughed and said, you know dang well I don't have any money she looked to her best friend who conveniently found something interesting on the ceiling so she was no help. The client then turned back to me, puffed up a bit trying to look more serious than I did and asked well what are you going to do if we just leave? You can't keep us here I figured this was going to be her next course of action. She was right, I couldn't detain them. It gets into a grey area near the border of kidnapping and not something I wanted to chance but what I did do was point out to her that I had her release form with all of her information and a photocopy of her id. I let her know the second they walk out the door I would contact the police and report them for theft of services. Thinking it over for a few minutes they sat back down and she started making phone calls trying to scrape together the cash to avoid police involvement. About an hour later, a half hour past closing. A guy shows up with a fist full of bills for me and that's when all the heck breaks loose. Her last ditch effort it seems, was to call the guy she was cheating on her boyfriend with. The guy throws the money on the counter and starts a screaming match with the client and the boyfriend, while the best friend just stands there yelling at everyone. Their use of adjectives was impressive. Somehow I managed to wrangle this herd of cats out the door so I can lock up the shop. By the time I got everything closed down the screaming match had turned into a fist fight in the parking lot and someone at the fast food joint a few doors down called the cops anyway. Shop locked up, money in hand. I nope the frick out and let the cops do their do. Thankfully I never saw any of them again. Not a tattoo artist but was getting the outlines of my sleeve being finished when I noticed this average. Normal looking dude start twitching while being tattooed. The artist then became noticeably uncomfortable and then about 5 minutes. Later I crap you not the dude shat himself while getting a back piece. Reasoning, he was too scared to ask to the bathroom. Sat through the whole ordeal. I apprenticed at a tattoo shop for about 2 years in college. I ended up leaving, running for the hills, when I finally wised up to the fact that the owner had virtually no intent of advancing me in any way. Bit liked to sexually harass me and use me to get his takeout and was using the, very crappy, shop mainly as a front to sell his homemade steroids. He once allowed me the privilege of tattooing the head of his penis. Edit, I actually tattooed it twice. He was satisfied with the first go and I ended up tattooing something on the shaft a little later. I had pledged to myself when I decided I wanted to seriously pursue tattoo that I would never pass up any opportunity to practice or learn. So I agreed. It was about as awkward as you'd expect, especially because a penis needs to be hard for you to tattoo it. The tattoo came out good, but in the end it was not worth having to stare at that creep stong for 20 minutes while he made awkward comments and my co-workers watched. I'll forever be grateful for what I did learn in my last 6 months there, though. They hired on an experienced older female artist who took a liking to me and ended up teaching me a lot and giving me more and more opportunities to tattoo. The bottom line was that the owner hated seeing me do actual work, and tried really hard to discourage any progress that was being made. It was a really weird and bad dynamic from the beginning, as he was a pisher, not even a tattoo artist, and would basically just force me on whatever unwilling artist he was employing at the time. They never lasted long. I already hate this guy. I recently tattooed a cop who clearly snuck out of rehab to get his fix. Dude was super coked out and asked another artist client if he looked like a sea kid. I tattooed a married man who tried to put his hand up my skirt during the tattoo. I have so many. Not an artist but spending time with mine I have seen. Steroid beast getting a back piece. Needed a break to pace the room every 5-10 minutes. Girl doing his piece was becoming visibly more agitated every single time. Shop manager comes in laughing about something. 
shows my artist an email that had been sent to the shop. Would it be possible to book in a game to make the lines in my tattoo a little thinner? Me and guy that does mind having a smoke break halfway through. The shop being near a train station means we're in Junkie Central. Junkie proceeds to inquire if shop does UV tattoos. No? What if I bring my own ink? Offers to pay in booze and drugs because he doesn't like handling money. The barter system is back people. Not a tattoo artist. But this is more of the finished work of a scummy butthole to two artists and hey, I actually read that language. Many 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 years ago I had been working and traveling around many countries across Asia and since I was in Kofan Yan, Thailand at the time I took a few days off to unwind. Over the next 3 days I regularly saw this Danish girl at some of the beach bars. She had a large tattoo that looked fairly new going down the right side of her back and torso. The tattoo was a phrase in Punjabi rather than the typical Asian scripts of Sanskrit, Chinese, or Japanese. You don't see a lot of those so it really stuck out. I am originally from this area in India. I finally mustered up enough courage to speak to her and asked her what the tattoo said. According to her it was an old hippie Sanskrit proverb about bringing peace and love to the world. But she had gotten this while traveling across India. She seemed so happy relaying her Indian travel stories, the mysticism, and why she finally got her very first tattoo. I felt so bad for her knowing what it really said. The characters were written so largely I couldn't see how she could maybe convert it into something else. The impression I got from her was she had left India earlier than anticipated so I asked about this. Turns out the last few weeks she had been hassled by quite a lot of guys. Even the tattoo artist was gropey and seemed angry when she kept turning his advances down over multiple visits, simply wanting the tattoo to be finished. I finally told her what the tattoo said and she was mortified. Not believing me at first I skyped a female cousin of mine in India who confirmed what I had said. The girl couldn't stop crying. She always wore something over her bikini after that. The tattoo actually read this B is a S. User and abuser. I have no idea what happened to her afterwards as I had to get back to work. But I'm presuming she had to somehow get the tattoo removed which going by the size would have been very expensive and painful. Poor girl. Oh my god. This made my stomach turn. Not a tattoo artist but very crazy tattoo related story about my two friends in Kankan on spring break a couple years ago. They went to a tattoo parlor very drunk. Horrible idea. Kankan can be super violent. And one got a tattoo of our college's logo on his upper thigh. When they got asked to pay, the guy upped the bill from $50 to $300. They disputed and got a knife pulled on them. They tried to run but one didn't make it so the other went back. They held on to the guy who didn't make it out at knife point and escorted the other to multiple ATMs around the area and made him withdraw cash until his card was declined. Solid to though. Solid to though. Lawful evil right there. The first guy to tattoo my dad died of cancer a couple of months after he got his first tattoo and the second moved to Spain then died of brain cancer. Can I tattoo your dad please? When getting on of my tattoos done, a girl walking in and asked to get her clit pierced. You can probably imagine how that went. Blood and a passed out woman. I got my clit hood pieced the day after I got my first Brazilian wax. The wax was way more painful. A girl came in with parental signature and all to get her first tattoo. She was 17. She was being tattooed by the shop owner who was I think actually doing it as a gift for something because he was friends with her dad. So it's already sort of an uncomfortable situation with her being kind of young but no one really even paid attention or cared until the needle hit the skin and she then proceeded to sob and wail loudly. We were all trying so hard to stifle our uncontrollable laughter. She insisted he finish so this went on for around an hour. Just variations of shrieks and sobs barely muffled by her boyfriend's shirt. It was the hardest I had laughed in so so long. Not a tattoo artist. But my brother is one. He was roughly 6 months into his apprenticeship and he called me up to tell me this particular story. It's about 2 hours before the shop is supposed to close and some unkept man comes in. Think skinny pee from Breaking Bad. He wants a crappy tribal tattoo and my brother tried to tell him that he will not enjoy a tribal tattoo in a few years. But he is adamant about it. Anyway he starts to put the stencil on him and everything is fine. Goes back to get the paperwork ready, he has to sign the agreement saying he isn't under the influence of any drugs or drinking. He gets started on the tattoo after the stencil dries for a bit. The dude is doing fine. 
but after about 15 minutes he passes out. My brother turns his arm over to look at his wrists. Track marks. The dude is a massive junkie. The shop was known for junkies wanting a tattoo and they have knockout readily available for this exact case. Now, mind you this is during his apprenticeship so his mentor didn't tell him this as a joke and never mentioned the junkie issue. He gives the dude the Narcan and has to call 9, 1, 1, all while he is literally overdosing on his table. I have a tribal tattoo. It is not crappy, but it is very late 90s early zeros. It's like a time capsule on my body. I was getting a tattoo once and a guy came in. He came up to my artist and asked if he could get a tattoo near his dong. The artist kind of cocked his head and said of what the dude promptly pulled down his underwear a bit and showed a line of shaved hair, the width of a typical razor, to his shaft and said I'd like a little dude with a lawnmower there. My artist told him to frick off. That sounds freaking incredible. Not a tattoo artist but a tattoo artist stopped one of my friend from getting bon appetit above her female area in high school. He basically gave her a long lecture on how it's a terrible idea and it was hilarious. This huge crowd of people comes in, literally a group of like 15. I'm guessing they all work together, so other than them crowding my small tattoo shop, I'm not too concerned. This one gal hands me a sketch of what she wants done on one of her co-workers. They wanted a baby coming out of his but whatever, I've gotten weirder requests. The guy getting the tattoo looks really nervous, understandable I guess. He went out to take a breather for 5 minutes or so, then he comes in, all confident and pulls his pants all the way down. I politely mention that he doesn't need them all the way down, he could just drop them a bit. He declined saying he'd prefer them down. Due to him sweating pretty heavily down there then the gal that gave me the original concept gives me a different one all the sudden. A dog with a shirt saying nod so yeah. Pretty weird experience overall. The nod dog. Not an artist but I was 16 and my friend said she was gonna pay for us to get tattoos. We get to this guy's house and he has a prison tattoo gun. She gets hers first but couldn't handle it. Guy was wasted and started on my tattoo. He then turned on P and started wanking it. We left soon after. The fuck did I just read? I am not a tattoo artist myself but I heard a story about someone whose GF had died and he wanted a tattoo of a yellow Jewish holocaust badge with her name on it. Not me but my artist told me about when he first started tattooing and worked in a chain shop. They regularly got P stars and one of them wanted purple polka dots on his ball sack. The only way to achieve this apparently was to make the guy hard. Luckily my artist was busy tattooing and wasn't responsible for fluffing. Pretty sure I'm that client. Obligatory not a tattoo artist but the tattooed. I had a tattoo artist that I used for all of my ink prior to moving. After I left I had to find a new artist if I wanted more tattoos and did so. I liked my new guy and got several tattoos from him but looked forward to going back to my original artist after I made plans to move back home. Sure enough within the month of moving back, I was interested in new work and of course to say hey to my buddy. I didn't plan a specific day to come see him, but the day came one sunny day in April. Like your standard pill head, I had taken an unknown amount of Xanax earlier in the day before I was scheduled to leave for a friend's party. I was feeling so good, like a goddamn intoxicated hero and wanted to ride around before we left, and convinced a friend to stop at the tattoo shop. My friend did not know I was immensely fricked at the time. I get into the tattoo shop and my guy isn't there. I'm okay. I barge into this other guy's booth and ask the tattooist, has he seen my guy? He's currently working on a tattoo himself and his canvas is very WTF about me storming in. Naturally co-owner says he usually comes in at 3. It was give or take 230. So we elected to wait on him and shop for other crap nearby. 330 rolls around so I came back to check for him. And tattoo man still is nowhere in sight. My drunken mind says it's perfectly appropriate to harass the CEO owner about sharing the tattooist's phone number. He refuses and my drunken self gets louder. But he needs to fix my tattoo. IT looks like crap the tattoo I was referencing really did look kinda bad at this point but I've also had the tattoo for 10 years so even if the work was never that great I was definitely way late in trying to get it fixed. In short, 
I was pretty ridiculous in my tactics to get his number. The CEO owner basically says I'm not getting his phone number due to privacy but we're welcome to keep checking back for him. I came back one more time at 430. Equally as belligerent I demand to see my tattoo artist or insist that someone else call him so I at least know when he will be in. At this point I am definitely the center of attention at the shop but didn't realize it until my friend told me after I sobered up. Apparently people are staring and whispering just a bit but I couldn't be bothered to even notice. Finally my friend convinced me to just leave and come back another day. I remember saying yeah whatever I'm not coming back here before walking out with him to go to the party. Needless to say I got sober very shortly after this happened and now I'm way too embarrassed to seek out my former tattoo guy. So yeah, I am that client. TL. DR. Took a face full of Xanax and royally embarrassed myself at my tattoo guy's shop by acting like an butt. Now too embarrassed to go back. When I was getting my Blues Brothers tattoo, the artist was asked by another artist to verify the spelling of a word in a Latin language tattoo. My artist said she had no idea and I asked to see. What was written down was Sempifidilis and the artist said that girl who was getting it was marrying a marine and wanted to get it tattooed on her to show him how much she loved him. I told him that both words were spelled incorrectly and gave him the correct spelling. He said he thought that was how it was spelled but couldn't convince this girl that she was wrong. I suggested Google to show her the correct spelling and he said he had tried that but she didn't believe it, so he wanted to ask the boss, my tattoo artist, what he should do. I told him that he should tattoo the dumb bee exactly as she asked him to and let her walk around with a misspelled tattoo the rest of her life but the boss said no. Tell her the correct spelling one more time and if she didn't listen then refuse to do the tattoo. I was sad that they chose that path but it was completely understandable. I'm an apprentice. A girl came in wanting to get a starfish tattooed on her butthole. We spent an hour and a half convincing her to get anything else. But honestly white girls that jump and screech are the worst. Serious, tattoo artists. What was your worst mistake and how did the client react? I had a client who decided he wanted lettering on his forearms. Sayings in Greek and Hebrew. He doesn't speak either language. But he had one of his friends double check the spelling before he sent the references to me. Came in, we did the tattoos. Pretty simple appointment. Fast forward to a couple weeks later. I get a message from my client about the tattoo that was done in Hebrew. He owns a small construction restoration company, and he has a few Israeli guys who work for him. Apparently, they were giving him a lot of crap for his Hebrew tattoo. He originally thought they were just messing with him, because it was spelled wrong. The font he had chosen off a quick google search essentially changed a couple of the letters kinda like the difference between an F and a T, making it a completely different word. We ended up being able to fix it pretty easily and had a good laugh about it. But definitely beware when you're getting tattoos in a language you and your artist don't speak. So I didn't mess up but I had a client scare me. I was tattooing his sister's name on him. She passed away. Gabriella with one L in it. Past the point of no return he asks me there's two L's. Right I think I had a heart attack. And he started laughing. He thought it was hilarious. I died a little and pretended to laugh. When I was but a wee baby pisser. I worked at the biggest shop in my city which had 14 artists and 2 pissers. It was the peak of the tramp stamp trend. I'm still so sad that was the nickname. But antlers was so much better. So when a super tiny 18 year old black woman came in and wanted her name on her lower back with a flower it was just normal. An older white male tattoo artist took her to pick a font. It took a minute, even though back then everyone went with Edwardian. But they came out. I had her do paperwork and he got the drawing finished. She okayed the design. She okayed the stencil. She sat for the tattoo. Loved it. Tipped him and left. Two hours later she called back sobbing saying we ruined her life. The counter girl told her to come in and we would fix whatever was wrong. Tattoo comes back with her two gigantic, angry f friends who are ready to freak out. We finally see the tattoo. Her name was Whitney. The N got left out in the font process. So huge across her lower back it said Whitey. It was covered for free and with many apologies with three giant purple roses. The tattoo artist was so fricked up over that he didn't come in for a week. It was an honest mistake, but it was the worst fricking spelling error I've seen. Definitely the worst spelling error I've read on here. Damn. A few years ago I was tattooing a client who had apparently lost a bet. 
His buddies were allowed to tattoo something behind his shoulder as long as it wasn't racist or offensive. Turns out the guy drew up a design of a leprechaun throwing up on a book. Sure, why not? Everyone was sober and they were paying pounds up front. Easy work the drawing was really simple and the shading was easier than I thought it would be. Turns out everyone liked it. Except the guy with the tattoo of a leprechaun throwing up on a book. He picked at the scab, trying to get rid of it, completely took it from bad to worse. It comes in about 10 days later, demanding a refund of money he didn't pay or the studio, not me, cover it up. Nope. Management said you signed for it in your right mind and then damaged it yourself. Personally I was yelled at and told never to to anyone like that. It only works in television series or film. Did I make a mistake? Yes and no. The lesson here is don't get involved in others drama when permanent body marking are involved. Honestly sounds like an expected reaction from the type of person who would actually take a bet that would force him to get a tattoo. My only spelling mistake ever was in Italian. Girl wants a phrase in Italian. She writes it down no less than 5x on a paper. I tell her to make sure it is correct. I don't speak Italian. She insists it is correct. I draw up some nice script. Tattoo it with no issues. Bandage. Pay and she leaves. She comes back in hysterical and tells me I spelled it wrong. I hadn't thrown out the paper. I spelled it exactly how she spelled it. I asked what she wanted to do. And she decided a no one I know speaks Italian. That was about 15 years ago. I often wonder if she ended up getting it covered up. Lomeo it's good that she was able to accept the mistake as her own. Worked as a pisser in a shop a decade ago. A guy came in and wanted Murphy's Law. The artist free handed a design on him. He green lit it after watching in the mirror and they did the beautiful piece with a banner saying Murphy's Law. Seemed fitting. The guy loved the fact that his one messed up tattoo was the Murphy's Law one. That's actually better than getting it right. Apprentice here. Nothing major but bad karma on one tattoo from the get go that absolutely floored my confidence for a bit. Only recently did my first ever small tattoo on a client. Had to do a small range of flash ideas that I felt comfortable with. Had my mentor, who, judging by some other stories, I'm very lucky to have. He's a sound dude. Discuss with me beforehand my needle choices, placement technique, usual bits and was ready to go. Every felt ready. Midway through, my machine goes. It's brand new. My only one. Managed to sort it without much fuss. In doing so, in my panic put the wrong needle size in the machine when it came to replacing it with a fresh one. I botched a line when I realize almost immediately the size difference. Change again. Nerves are shot. Back at it. Brand new foot pedal brakes. Replace it with an old one from my mentor. It breaks too. Power pack dies. That was brand new too. Panic. Spill my ink. Practically had a meltdown in my brain about what has happened. Carried on with another artist's equipment. Apologizing as calmly as I can to my client. Mentor calmed my nerves and I ended up pulling it out the bag and doing a job I was happy with somehow but most importantly. The client loved it. Anyway, not a crazy bad story but as an apprentice who's also a fairly confident dude, I have never felt so absolutely flawed in my life. Tattooing someone is monumentally stressful when all doesn't go to plan. I can't wait to do more and progress, but frick me what a time for crap to happen. My mentor helped me sort all my gear afterward and was super cool. Sat with me and said something like well, of all the times and all the things that could have gone wrong. That was the absolutely perfect one for them. Nerve wracking stuff. Hey, at least you know you can handle it if something breaks mid to two again. I was working at a place when a guy came in for a full back piece of three different cars. It took like four visits to finish and each visit he'd look at it and say it looks awesome and then he would take off. On the last visit, they call me in to look at it to show me how awesome it turned out. Well. All the steering wheels were on the wrong side and the reason no one caught it was because the dude was looking in a mirror to check his progress so they looked correct. I'm pretty sure the guy was super chill about it when they offered a bunch of free work and they fixed it in another session. Well, they'd be on the correct side for some parts of the world. I was a receptionist at a tattoo shop. One of the artists misspelled neighborhood on this guy's neck. He spelled it neighborhood, leaving out the first H. Neighborhood was the guy's nickname. It was a pretty large, elaborate tattoo so there was no fixing it. 
I don't think I have ever cringed so hard in my life. The guy was surprisingly really cool about it. He did see the drawing and approved it before it was tattooed on. He ended up making the artist tattoo a H on his palm so if anyone gave him crap about the misspelling he could smack that person with the missing H. The, the dude's got a sense of humor. I like that. I had a client email me asking for a 4 letter acronym. I don't do freehand scripts so I put the letters into a font generator and sent him back some options. He picked the one he liked best and we set an appointment date. On the day of his session, I showed him the acronym again and we chose a size. I placed the stencil and he approved it and I got started. Midway through the tattoo I asked him what the letters stood for and he told me. My heart stopped. The letters were in the wrong order. The middle two were swapped. I ran to the shop computer to check my email and sure enough, in his original email he'd sent me, they'd been correct. I had typed them into the font generator wrong, but to be fair, he had seen them several times since then and didn't notice my mistake. I spent the rest of the session covering them up with another design he'd had as a backup to two idea and I didn't charge him. But it was a good learning experience for me to always ask what initials acronyms stand for ahead of time to make sure I get them in the right order. I gave a guy a tattoo in prison of his girlfriend's name on his arm. I knew him on the street and his girl and knew it was going nowhere, and insisted he change his mind. He didn't. So I made a bet with him that crap was gonna go belly up within 6 months. When we got out of segregation and back onto the yard a few weeks passed at most and I can see him having a bad conversation on the phone. He called me over to his cell and offered me up a huge freaking sack of commissary without a word. I didn't take it, figured he needed it more than me. Still feel like crap to this day. Respect to the dude for going through something usually crappy, while already in some crap prison, but then still immediately honoring the bet you could have even forgot about by that point. My ex did a large scarification on the client's abdomen. The client had brought in a piece of paper with the stylized word preservance. I was invited in midway to see the progress and had to tap my ex on the shoulder for a spelling lesson. The release form for my tattoo artist had a giant section for anyone getting a tattoo with words or letters. The whole section stated that any misspellings were not their fault and to put the letters in order exactly how you wanted them tattooed. I was doing a big gold tattoo of Cringer aka Battle Kit on a really cool client's leg. I got so into doing this big, awesome tiger head that I forgot that it wasn't a goddamn tiger and colored the stripes black. I realized about a third of the way through filling them in and let the guy know. He was disappointed, but mostly okay with it. I felt like I was going to puke. I finished the thing feeling so freaking sick and then refuse payment. Man. Going from that feeling of elation to immediate crushing disappointment was hard to shake, and kind of dazed me. It was extra crushing because it was a fun tattoo during a time when I wasn't that busy and was doing mostly absolute dreck. The payment was just the icing on the top, so letting that go was hard too. Ugh, just thinking about it now is making me feel sick. Dude I would try not to beat yourself up too bad. The fact it still bothers you shows you're totally a good person. Besides, even if he was bummed out initially, I'm sure he managed to accept it eventually. I was working at a shop in NYC. This very heavy set gentleman came in and wanted a full back piece. No other tattoos. The design was very elaborate and quite good. Once it was all approved the tattoo stencil was applied, and again approved by the client. I wasn't doing the tattoo, but I was occasionally checking in on the process. Once the line work was done his shading had begun. I noticed something horrible. The stencil was applied over his rolls of skin on his lower back. I made a comment to the artist privately. He went back to tattooing, moved the skin apart at one point, and without a doubt several inches of untattered skin. The client never noticed. I stopped working there not too long after that. Not for this reason. I've always felt so bad for that guy. Once had a client call the shop who was crying hysterically because, according to her, I had done her tattoo backwards. It took a few minutes to get her to calm down to the point where we realized she was looking at it in the mirror. She apologized and hung up. Edit thanks for the upvotes and awards. You're all too kind. That's my favorite story in this thread. I've never really made any big mistakes that garnered a reaction. But one of my clients has a tattoo from another artist in a local studio that says Gradad instead of Grandad. Tattoo artist here. 
Best case I ever saw, a guy came into our shop asking about a cover up. The tattoo wasn't done at our place. He had what we call a belly rocker. One of those lettering tattoos that arcs over the belly. Think Tommy Lee's mayhem tattoo. Usually gothic font. Gangsta type piece. He had beautifully executed, bold, black, old English letters across his belly that were supposed to read, scarred for life. Whoever did the tattoo, as well as the tattooed guy, had forgotten one of the letters, an R. This guy came in with scared for life on his belly, we showed him some cover up options, including full torso, Japanese style bodysuit stuff. Someone may have joked about doing the old proofreading trick of just putting a little red arrow and adding the missing letter. I don't know who did the thing but never saw him again after giving cost estimates for the giant cover up. 15 or so years ago, we still joke about this one. Oh semi recently I did an armband of sheet music on this walk in and I put one of the segments on upside down because I don't read music and it looked right. Client noticed when I was about halfway done with that segment. Luckily she was cool and just said she should have checked her stencil harder and shrugged it off. Misspelled the name Jamie. Jamie. I asked the client for the spelling and showed the client the laid out script before it was applied. So not my fault. The client was very disgusted with himself for not knowing how to spell the name of the woman he loved enough to show it on his skin for life. I felt sorry for the guy so I offered him a cover up at an incredible discount as well as the name Ray applied spelled correctly. Unfortunately he never took me up on that offer. I work with a Jamie and a Jamie. Welcome to my personal spelling hack. Artist here. Spelling mistakes are common in the industry. I'm the first to tell a customer that I'm a terrible speller so they had better check everything before the needle hits the skin. I once had a customer who had to call his wife and confirm how they spelled their daughter's name before we got started, and it's a good thing he did. But oftentimes the worst mistakes are stray lines, most often caused by flinching or missing details, usually a result of losing part of a stencil during the tattoo process. I've heard of clients being fairly crushed by tattoo mistakes, but generally they can be corrected with a little creativity and skill. My worst mistake was made when I was learning to tattoo. As an apprentice I had to take what I could get when it came to practicing. Thank goodness for dumb friends. I tattooed over some very thin skin for the first time, inside the elbow, and blew out a couple of the lines. A blowout is when the needle goes a little too deep and the ink spreads a bit in the soft slushy layers of the skin it looks like a permanent bruise and in this case it looked like the tattoo was trying to cover up track marks. She didn't say much about it at the time but I knew she was pee. Luckily, I was eventually able to shade over the area and cover up the mistake when we added to the tattoo. Did my first one on an old schoolmate who was aware of my artistic abilities. Despite having never applied ink before and he offered me his back. I had three pros watching as I drew a geisha free-handed on his back while he was hunched over. When the design was laid out, he checked it in the mirror and was good with it so I began lining it. The thing is, the other artist said it looked great but unfortunately I was doing something else when he checked it so I didn't notice just how screwed up it really was anyway. I lined it and we took a break. As he stood up while I was watching, my heart dropped as I witnessed the geisha's face droop into a palsied state on one side. He was sitting leaned forward with his elbows on his knees while drawing it and so distorted the canvas. But now, this sounds crappy, but I never really liked this guy too much. He originally wanted a back full of strippers, so I didn't feel bad that when he went to look in the mirror, he lifted his shoulder to look at the tattoo. Which normalized the proportions and he said it looked awesome. Well, good then. Big lesson learned though. I still have the occasional nightmare over it. Dang you drew a geisha stroke victim on him and dipped that's cold af. I watched my boss turn a stylized Tierney, mistress's name, into Diane, wife's name, once. I'd never believe it if I didn't see it with my eyes. Also, wow why tattoo your mistress's name on yourself? Got a small tattoo on my foot. As he was making a line I heard him say whoops. I now have a stray line that's jutting off away from the rest of the tat. Fortunately over time it has faded. But it's such a crappy tattoo. The whole thing is just the worst. It was only $60 so I didn't say anything. And just told myself one day I'd get it covered up by something better. So I got a misfit skull. Crimson ghost. 
to two years ago, the guy started filling in part of the mouth that was supposed to be left unfilled. He did a decent job of fixing his mistake but said it was free because of the screw up. I tipped him a $20 and left. Nobody who's seen it has ever noticed that it's a little off. As other artists have said, none besides some blowouts and wonky lines that were fixable when I was a new artist. But I've fixed some really fricked up ones. Mostly spelling mistakes. Some terrible ones. But I had to do a cover up of one of a guy's son. The portrait was wonky and obviously done by a kitchen wizard. The worst part was that all the designs the scratcher did around it were for a girl. They weren't approved by the client. The scratcher that did it thought it was a little girl and did all kinds of pinks and hearts and bows in the hair and around it. The worst part, he wrote, daddy's girl. The lettering basically butted right up against the portrait on top and bottom so just covering up the designs wasn't possible. It needed a full on cover up, which I would have recommended regardless because of the crap portrait by itself. So we covered it up with an approved design and he came back to my shop for my version of the hyper realistic portrait of his son that he wanted. Holy frick. That dude needs to be banned from the profession. When I first opened my shop I was super nervous about making mistakes and those first few clients were a roller coaster of anxiety. Well of course one of my first clients comes in and asked for a tattoo to be covered because another artist screwed it up. The tattoo was meant to be a peanut riding a motorcycle however the tattoo artist screwed up and it looked like a penis riding a malformed motorcycle from heck. So I get to work covering it up with a new design. She asked for a raven to cover it up since I could color the raven in black and cover up the other artist's mistake. No problem all good right? No. The tattoo was in a super awkward position and the client wouldn't stop squirming. Eventually I finished and to my dismay I noticed my frick up. I didn't cover the peanut part of the original tattoo properly and the raven looked like it had a little penis coming out of it. When she realized she was angry and demanded it be fixed, the only solution I saw was to attach another smaller raven to the original one as a sort of chain link. The client now tells people that the tattoo is two chained ravens because our inner darkness must be chained. But we both know why she really got it. Ha little penis man. Little penis man made my day, thank you. Back when I first started tattooing, I think I'd only been doing it for about 3 months at this point, one of my pals asked if he could come to me for finger tattoos. I asked my mentor, and he said it was too early for me to move on to hands just yet. One of the other guys in the studio overheard and said he'd actually been wanting to get his fingers tattooed for a while. If my mentor was happy with it he let me practice on him. My mentor okayed it, so he got to work on the stencil. The tattooist I was practicing on is ambidextrous, and had an exact font in mind for his finger tattoos, so he said if I got everything set up, he'd freehand the script, no stencil, on his hands and then we could just get started. I finished the first hand, everything was fine, until I went on to start his second hand, at which point he was checking out the tattoo I just finished, and realized he'd written the script out left to right facing him. Meaning to everyone else the finger tattoos were backwards, just the phrase, not the whole letters. Cue much panic, me convinced he's going to go mental at me for not noticing. Him convinced he's landed me in it with my mentor, before we both calmed down and started spitballing on how to fix the tattoo on the fly. The phrase he'd gone for, riff raff, was thankfully similar enough on each hand that all we had to do was block out the vowels a bit more and make them slightly larger than the other letters in order to hide the original vowel underneath. In the end we fixed it, he got the tattoo the right way around, and you can't even tell there was once a mistake under it. Worst was when I just started out tattooing. A few months in I'm tattooing a old co-worker's wife and she's getting some roman numerals and before starting I ask her to triple check the numbers and she's like yup all good let's do it. One hour after being done I receive a text from my old co-worker that the one of the letters are wrong. That was a great week to be alive dealing with that anxiety. When I started tattooing I was working at an awful studio that would often give me works that didn't fit my style in any way. Very fine line works which I wasn't very good at. The mistakes I made were usually crooked tattoos or going too deep and instead of actual helping me the owners either would yell at me later. Force me to tell clients I was more experienced than I actually am and got upset that I asked too many questions. Eventually they just stopped giving me work altogether. 
Sadly every once in a while they give my number to unhappy clients that I tattooed at that time and I still get calls asking me for compensation. I know it's also my fault for those things but they really took off any responsibility. These days I have my own small one person studio, I have nothing but sweet and satisfied clients and ironically I do a lot of fine line tattoos which I used to hate at that studio. But if you want something specific while I was in the studio some girl wanted a cursive tattoo that was extremely tiny. It was extremely small and thin and when I finished it looked good but when it healed a lot of the letters spread and mashed up together and because she barely had any tattoos it was very noticeable. I gave her money back even though she demanded me to pay for tattoo removal. And yes she signed a contract beforehand but the studio told me it protected only them and not me. I read thoroughly and fortunately realized she had no case against me so she couldn't sue. In general today I recommend people to steer clear of that place. Disgusting money grabber buttholes. They do treat other tattoo artists who work for them like crap. Sounds like someone needs to open a shop with competitive seat rental prices and better policies nearby. Free market. Crush em. Tattoo artists of Reddit. Who and what have you refused to do? I once refused to tattoo a girl and her father complained to me by yelling at me from about 2 feet away. She was 14. Legal age where I live is 18 and she wanted her boyfriend's name above her eye. She was willing to compromise to her hand though. Number. Ro. Really nice of you. Can't imagine a father would agree to something like that. Got a funny story actually. I once tattooed a queen of heart symbol on this girl. It was just a red Q written with classic card font. And a crown with a heart in it. Two weeks later she came back and had a black eye. I was new to the area so I wasn't aware of gang symbols as much. But I realized it was a Latin King Queen symbol. A famous Chicago gang. I covered it up with a slightly bigger design for free. Refused any card symbols afterwards. A lot of people get drunk beforehand because they think it will ease the pain. Not only it will bleed more. But the tattoo artist won't trust that you'll not regret the tattoo in the morning. I turned drunk people away several times. Plus people wanting to tattoo their so's names. Nope. Won't do it. I once was refused a tattoo. I wanted two ws on my bust cheeks. Bent over equals wow. I'm thankful to the artist 20 years later for the refusal. Flipped around equals mom. I won't tattoo someone unless they can tell me themselves what they want. A lot of people's friends parents partners do all the talking and tell me what the other person wants. If you want a tattoo, you gotta put on your big kid pants and tell me what you want. That's a really good policy. I only personally know of one instance where that policy by a different artist made things awkward, but was very easy to clear up. I went with a buddy of mine to help her get her first tattoo. She is deaf and didn't feel comfortable speaking. Extreme example but it literally happened to me about 3 weeks ago. Couple times that stick out. Refused to tattoo a young guy's entire face blue. I was actually the counter person at the time. Not the tattooer. But I spoke with the client. Comma he was maybe early mid 20s and thought his parents would like him better that color. Several weeks later we got a thank you letter from him. I refused to do any Nazi. Gang. White pride. ETC tattoos. I will refuse someone if they make me uncomfortable. I will refuse to tattoo someone if they can't give enthusiastic consent basically meaning I'm not gonna let someone husband tell me the tattoo their wife is getting, while she hangs back and doesn't say a word. Not a tattoo artist but I was getting a 7 hour session done and me and my artist were about 4 hours in and these drunk girls came in and were demanding that he stop tattooing me so one of their friends could get a tattoo on a dare. They dared her to get a Hitler moustache tattooed on her upper lip. They kept yelling at my artist to do it and were telling me to go home because I was done. I wasn't done. He told them to come back in a few minutes and they left and he locked the front door so they couldn't come back inside. LOL. That girl would have regretted it forever. The guy I go to won't do certain things. He won't go above the collarbone or past the wrists. Onto your hands. Unless you have a significant amount of visible tattoos or he knows you really well. Shop regular or something. He won't do anything on feet at all because people don't take care of them. Then they show it to someone and they're like that looks like crap. Who did that to you he's got a reputation to protect. He is also very wary about doing anything where a brass strap would rub it while it's healing. Sounds like a true artist. Good for you. 
my good friend wanted a memorial tattoo for our other good friend on his shoulder. One problem. He wasn't dead. So it was just plain as creepy. I was like no dude. That's weird as frick. As someone whose sister has a memorial tattoo for her. Thank you. Short version. Had a baby, was diagnosed with cancer and given only about a year to live. She went out and got my name on a heart with angel wings tattooed on her. It's been almost 13 years and I am still embarrassed. The guy who walked in, placed his beer down in front of me and proclaimed my mum died today. I need a tattoo did not in fact get tattooed. Well, not by you. Reminds me of a promotion a tattoo parlor was doing in my town. They were reclaiming the swastika and offering free swastika tattoos to anyone for one day only. A few people took them up on their offer. Slightly related story from a past job. I had a client come into my office and I saw that she had a Harry Potter lightning bolt tattooed behind her ear. I was about to compliment her on it, when she turned her head and I realized there were two. It wasn't a lightning bolt, it was the SS symbol. Awkward. When I was deciding on options for my tattoo, one of the ones I didn't go with was don't tell my mom as a tramp stamp. Present me would be grateful if that were refused. Client came in for a lip tattoo at my fiance shop. He had everything set up, stencil, machine etc. When she pulled her lip down her entire lip was covered in herpes sores. Needless to say he politely declined. I work at a dental office and we don't not work on you if you have cold sores. It's mainly to protect you. We have full PPE and errant at a high risk of transferring it to use. However, there is a high risk that our hands touching that cold sore can spread it to other parts of your face, including your eye. An artist I used to go to regularly before I moved outright refuses to do names. She said I don't wanna do a tattoo of a boyfriend's name or whatever and then go through the hassle of trying to cover it up a few months later lol. Color realism portraits on very dark skin tones. Props if you know how to do it and it heals well but I just can't. More than happy for it to be black and grey but I've yet to see really well healed color realism on dark skin tones and I don't want anyone walking around with a cocked up tattoo. I admire anyone, be it an artist, a doctor or a builder, who has the pride to say I don't have the skill for this project, instead of trying and messing up. I don't do the face at all or the neck. So many people regret those. I just covered up a set of eyelids that said just chill. Not an artist but back when it was popular I overheard an artist refuse to tattoo YOLO on some chick. It was an actual sincere move. Not a tattoo artist, but I once met a guy who had his receding hairline filled in with tattoo ink. Like, with stippling to look like a buzz cut to make it look like he didn't have a receding hairline. He kept his actual hair cropped really short to try to make it blend in. It didn't work. That's the only time I've ever seen that, but wow was that a terrible idea. Worked in shops for about 8 years. Same story as most. No racist crap. Face. Hands. Neck. Genitals all required a consult beforehand but never a straight no unless an artist wasn't comfortable doing it unhappy with the idea. It's been said in this thread already, but hands unless you already have a significant amount of tattoos. I was getting a tattoo by a buddy of mine who was the newest guy in the shop he was working at. This meant he would get a lot of the quick 1 to 2 hour walk in tattoos. Some younger girl came in wanting something on her hands. He told her what the size tattoo would cost but said he doesn't do hands. He said he'd do it elsewhere but not on her hands. I asked him about it after she had left and his exact words were, you would got to earn that crap. He also told me he doesn't like doing feet either since it's tough for them to look nice. Regardless of how great the artist is, definitely made me realize that at the end of the day tattoo artists have their reputation to protect. I'm never a fan of the earn it mentality, sure. Someone should have a consultation before hands neck face but there's plenty of people out there who can get a ton of coverage in a short time that aren't ready for life changing tattoos. I'm not an artist, but I was getting a consultation for the tattoo I got for my late stepdad several years ago, and while I was waiting my artist was turning a girl down because she wanted to get Jeff's S tattooed on her hip. She got pissed and left, and I thought excellent, I can trust this guy. I had a client crap himself once, as we were about to start, in short shorts, on my bed, 
in summer, without AC. Luckily we wrap the Jesus out of our beds but the cleanup was not fun. He was somehow unhappy that I wasn't going to crack on with his tattoo. An artist once refused to tattoo how to use chopsticks on my arm. I'm very happy he did. 2008 was such a fun year, but also very unfortunate given how things have changed since then. I don't get it. Happened so much. Very often it's a dating or married couple where one is clearly being dragged along because the other convinced them to get a tattoo of some kind. The person not getting the tattoo will completely speak for the other person so she wants this. And she wants this like that it's always handled on a case by case basis but something that I will do often is say something like of I didn't realize that was what you wanted. I actually don't have time now but if you can come back Monday, a lot of times they won't show or the person getting tattooed shows up alone and you can actually talk about what they want. Or if they even want to get a tattoo. My shop absolutely refused to do anything of a racist or hateful nature. This pee off a lot of rednecks when they were denied their confederate flags. I always just thought it was better to have a few people hate you for refusing their request than to be the shop that doesn't give a crap. I had someone in my class argue that the south wasn't racist it sounded kind of ignorant until everyone started yelling at how stupid of a comment that was. Just for some perspective. I'm from New York, nowhere near the south. My aunt is a tattoo artist and owns her shop. She had a trans woman come in and ask if they would tattoo a beauty mark on her face and how much. My aunt said well I'm busy the rest of the day, but I'll ask my other artists. It will just be the $50 minimum. The woman walked out at the sound of $50 but we didn't know she wasn't coming back. Every artist said no way am I tatting someone's face. I don't frick with faces. My aunt was willing, but was doing my work the rest of the day. The lady never came back. $50 is relatively cheap for a tattoo, albeit a very small one. I was refused a tattoo two years ago and I still want to get it. The day my pet lizard died I wanted to get his hand print tattooed on my hand. But the parlor I went to won't do it because they thought I would get judged for having a hand tattoo colon. I am still planning on getting it. Just haven't ye yet. I'm pretty much up for anything and everything. I outright refuse to tattoo racist crap, Nazi crap and hate symbols. Everything else is fair game. If you make a joke to me about getting your dong tattooed, I'll tell you to whip it out so we can tattoo it. This was about 18 years ago but I saw my tattoo artist refuse to tattoo this guy's hands. The artist had a policy where he would not do hands face neck. He told the guy that it makes people look like they just came out of jail and he didn't want to ruin future career opportunities for people. I've spent a significant amount of time in a tattoo shop. I've logged about 110 hours in the chair. The shop I mainly went to, Chicago, would not tattoo racist or gang themes but anything else was on the table. I was turned down by an artist in Hawaii when I requested to have my wedding band tattooed on. He knew something I didn't because my ex-wife left me when I returned from that deployment. The other artist I've been to, San Diego, wouldn't tattoo hands or neck face unless you already had sleeves or a significant amount of ink. We had a man come in with his 6 8 year old son and ask us to tattoo him. He said that he keeps getting lost because we keep moving houses so wanted to get his address and phone number tattooed on the kid's arm. He couldn't grasp the idea that they may move again. It's incredibly stupid. The kid was completely too young. It's still pretty stupid. Phone numbers change and maybe if you weren't dragging this kid through town by the arm telling each tattoo studio he was mentally disabled and so was a liability and instead paid a little bit of attention to your kid. Maybe, just maybe, he wouldn't want to not be around you. Luckily I own the shop I work at so I got to explain to him what a dumb freaking idea this was and how he should probably re-evaluate his choices in multiple areas of his life. My parents are pretty good friends with some local tattoo artists. They keep having to refuse a picture of a goblin smacking our PM. It's kinda funny, but it loses its punch after a while. Not an artist but I have been denied a tattoo. I am a huge fan of a show called Futurama and for months I have been wanting to tattoo the face of a character, Bender, on my butt. It's a reference, but it's a stupid idea so I was very reluctant. Until one night I got super drank and I was demanding to get the tattoo. We walked to the closest tattoo shop, shadiest place I have seen, and asked for it. 
The most chill and cool girl appeared we talked about it and she was cool with it somehow even though I was clearly drunk. Fortunately her boyfriend was also there and he wasn't okay with her touching another guy's butt, so she had to deny it. LOL a show called Futurima, yo we know man. You are not the only one who saw it. Tattoo artists of Reddit, what is the most wholesome story behind a tattoo you did? My ex is a tattoo artist. The most wholesome thing she ever did on someone was two drunk English guys walked into the shop a few minutes before closing. They were best friends on a road trip across the states with the ashes of the third friend that was supposed to go with them. They had been planning it for years. They both got his name tattooed on their butt. The plan for them was to show their butt to historical places. Apparently the friend wanted to moon Mount Rushmore. They decided that they'd show their butt to all of the historical places they were visiting. That's hilarious, inappropriate and heartwarming. A friend of mine is a tattoo artist. She got a guy come in with a photo of a tattoo on someone and insisted it be placed in the same place, exactly the same. It was a pink butterfly on the right wrist. When she asked him questions about it, he got offensive and just wanted to get it done. He was a big guy with a nearly full body of tattoos getting a pink butterfly on his wrist. Anyway, she does the tattoo. Only took about 30 minutes. And when he saw the finished tattoo he started to cry. It was his daughter's tattoo. One he took her to get. She had died a couple of weeks before in an auto accident. And he wanted to get her tattoo as a memorial. When he tried to explain beforehand. He kept getting choked up and got defensive automatically. As guys often do. When she asked him questions about it. He got defensive. TBF. When people ask me about my tattoos I find it easier to just say something like they're personal, because otherwise I usually have to explain what a Skyrim is and why I have the dragon word for full tapped on me. I feel like I read on here a couple months ago about a tattoo artist who had a grandmother and grandchildren come in. The grandchildren wanted tattoos that match their grandmothers. The grandmother was a concentration camp survivor. The tattoo artist did the tattoos for free. Does anyone else remember that story? That's the sweetest darkest thing I've ever read. It's hard to pick a particular one. Because people come in for sentimental reasons all the time. Certainly any memorial piece can be emotional for the client. And since I'm a sympathetic crier I always end up explaining their aftercare with the trying not to cry to wobble in my voice. Recently, though, I did a portrait of a woman's husband with his own signature reproduced underneath. His name was Tommy and she brought in a memory book of photos she'd made of her and him together that she'd given him on his last birthday before he passed from a sudden cancer, two weeks from diagnosis to death. Once the tattoo was done we flipped through the book together and she explained where they were and why he was so wonderful. Throughout the next few weeks I've had half a dozen people come in raving about the portrait and how much everyone loves it and sharing memories with me about the guy. He was very well loved by the community and I'm honored I got to tattoo him. This is such a sweet story and you sound like a lovely person. It must have meant a lot to the woman being able to share those stories of her husband. Tattoo artist for about 2 years here. Last winter I had a happy couple in their 20s walk in wanting tattoos. I didn't think much of it because we take walk ins every day. The girl goes first and got a small heart on her wrist. The guy goes second and gets a traditional diamond tattoo. It's basically just a really simple cartoon version of a diamond. I ask him why he wants this and just says he likes the design. Alright, no problem. They both leave happy. A week later I get a message from the girl thanking me for making their tattoo day so special. The guy had proposed to her later that evening after being together for 5 years. He got the tattoo to commemorate their engagement while she had no idea that he was going to propose. This still warms my heart every time I think about it. And also I'm glad she said yes because that would have sucked for him. Good thing she didn't say no. Not a tattoo artist. But I saw a news article recently about how a bunch of local female tattoo artists were offering free nipple tattoos for breast cancer survivors. My husband has also done a couple free nipple tats, he's only about a year in, but plans on always keeping them free. Not a tattoo artist, but my tattoo. My best friend died in an accident right after we started college. Her dad is a tattoo artist so we always talked about getting our first ones together. What I wanted changed pretty much constantly, but she always wanted this two shell pass on her wrist. A few months after she passed I went to her dad's shop and he tattooed it on me. 
It was always going to be a special one, but having her dad do it made it much more. I had a kid come in that was moving from home, probably for college and he had to leave his kitty behind. So he wanted to get her paw print on the spot she normally rests her paw. It almost brought tears to my eyes because I adore my cat and couldn't imagine leaving her. Well I know what tattoo I'm going to get now. Not an artist, but a story about my most recent tattoo. My grandma passed away about a month and a half ago, while sitting in the hospital room with her during the last few days, all of a sudden she starts reaching for something on the table beside her. It was only me, my wife and two aunties in the room. Grandma kept saying why is there is a feather right here, Adam and she could see a feather and trying to grab it. A feather is a symbol from heaven that everyone that has passed is doing good in heaven and you shouldn't have any worries. It was so surreal, and I crap you not walking out of the hospital what's on the ground outside my vehicle, a feather. The day after she passed, I find two feathers on the ground outside my door. One for grandma and one for grandpa who passed away 13 years ago, and just got an absolute chill down my spine like someone was right behind my shoulder. I recently got a white black feather on my forearm and will forever look at it whenever I miss her. I'm sorry for your loss, that's a great tattoo. I hope you're happy with it. Obligatory nata, but I've got some wholesome stories. My brother-in-law tattooed the first real drawing his daughter ever made. Like the first one that wasn't scribbles at least. She drew a monster on a napkin in a restaurant and it had arms and legs and a face. He was overjoyed and had it tattooed. As for me, I'm getting a tattoo in honor of my nephew on my ribs this year. He died of childhood leukemia. I'm very sorry for your loss. And I hope the tattoo will be a comforting way to remember him. Not a tattoo artist, as I'm sure you'll know through reading this thread, but but I got my first tattoo done on my one year of being clean from self-harm. I was an on and off cutter growing up, and six months after my failed suicide attempt I met the lead singer of my favorite band, Pierce the Veil. My fellow Emos will know who they are, and got him to write out a quote from their song for me and he drew a heart on the autograph too. So fast forward a few more months, I'd reached my one year and decided to tutter the quote to my ribs and got the heart he drew on the autograph done on my wrist. It was a way of promising myself to never fall back into that habit again and to always remind myself of why I got this done and the meaning behind it if I ever have those urges again. And as cheesy as it may sound, it's actually worked and helped me with my recovery. Now this February, I'll be 3 years clean from self harm. That's awesome. I'm an eating disorder survivor and one year into my recovery I got the nader symbol tattooed on my wrist. It's a promise to myself to never go back, and I'll look at it whenever I'm tempted to do those things again. I tattooed a girl and her aunt and mother. All the same day, the girl had gone through chemo and was waiting on results of her cancer. I was tattooing the phrase just let go. I crap you not. I finished the last letter, and wiped the tattoo. She got a phone call before I could clean it off. It was her doctor calling she had been cleared of cancer and cancer free. It was emotional for us all. But what timing it was to get the call just as the last letter was done. I hope she is doing well. AWW yay. I did a big flower piece. Cover up of self harm scars that went all up a girl's forearm and she wanted to have them covered before her college graduation ceremony. Her mom came in a few weeks later and got tattooed, and told me how important that was to her daughter and how happy she is to no longer have to see the bad memories on her body. Both have been steady clients since and always remind me how much that tattoo changed her self confidence and helped her move past that part of her life. Honestly being a tattooer can desensitize you to how much certain tattoos mean to people but situations like that always bring me genuine positive vibes x1000 knowing that my work can have such a lasting impact. Much love to all those overcoming a rough patch. Nata, group of friends from high school have an annual camping trip together. One of maybe two times a year all, these days. Most of us get together in the same place. A few of us sitting around the fire at 4am, and two guys kick the idea back and forth that everyone should get a tattoo to commemorate each other. They debated what the symbol should be. Something musical, but not everyone does music. Something for gaming, but not everyone games. Exhausting their options. One of them jokingly spits out, imagine we got, our friend, Doodle's face, like, somewhere non-obvious but also hilarious. 
Two days later, most of the group got a tattoo of Doodle's face on their thigh in the form of a Simpsons style doodle another friend drew of him and graffitied all over our high school. The best part was the reveal. Everyone except for Doodle, who couldn't make it camping that year, had the tattoo or knew about it. We kept it a secret for 6 months until we all got together over the holidays. At the end of our secret Santa exchange, we called Doodle in to unwrap his gift. All at once, 7 guys tore off their pants to reveal Doodle's face staring back at him from 6 milky thighs and 1 pasty white butt. This is hilarious. Not a tattoo artist but my aunt really wanted a tattoo when I was visiting her once. Lived on opposite sides of Canada pretty much. She was terminally ill and said, I want a tattoo and I have cancer so you have to get one with me too. We would joke about her playing the cancer card. I was against getting something off the wall as a tattoo but did it for her. She's not here anymore but the tattoo is for sure a nice reminder of her and her sassy attitude. The artist knew my aunt was sick and thought it was crazy but nice. Nata, not a tattoo artist, this is going to be common on this thread. I have a family member with a tattoo covering self-harm scars. They got something from one of their favorite fandoms. A protection creature, so it could keep the bad thoughts away. And they wouldn't want to screw up the tattoo they love so they wouldn't backslide. That is such a heartwarming story. Fandoms can be such an affirming and enriching thing when they are used so positively. I mean... The only tattoo that I plan on getting is just the alpha symbol. It's in remembrance of my best friend who passed away when he was 13. Pokemon Alpha Sapphire was his favorite game. This is sweet and reminds me how old I am at the same time. Nata but got a pretty wholesome story. On my mother's side of the family, we have 26 cousins in total. We are all close and had reunions all the time. When my grandmother passed away, a majority of the cousins came to the funeral. Well, two of my cousins are talented to two artists and they decided to commemorate the importance of family. So the cousins that were there all got tattoos. Each person got the Roman numeral of their age rank tattooed somewhere on their body. It was cool that nearly a dozen of the cousins were hanging out getting tattoos together. I missed the funeral but a year later went back to get mine. I'm 10 stroke 26 so I got X tattooed. It's pretty cool that we all have something to connect us together. That's so cool. It's hard to get all family together and harder even to get them all into tattoos. Should make a great memory in the coming years. I don't know if it's all that wholesome and I'm not an artist, but I have an alright tattoo story. I was 16 and let my friend tattoo me. I really wanted a star of David on my right, middle finger. I figured I could cover it with a ring and all would be good until I was 18. My family isn't exactly tight knit and my parents didn't pay much attention to me. One night my mom did notice it though and when she saw it she started crying. Turns out my aunt Laura, my namesake who was murdered years before I was born, had the same tattoo in the same spot. Pretty wild. I never tell people why I got my tats, and I want to share. I got Bruce Lee because my dad was an abusive idiot and it's the first only thing we ever bonded over before he went nuts. I got a wolf wearing a trucker hat cause my uncle was obsessed with wolves. Like he wore those shirts and had that cheesy art all over his walls. I got three monkeys doing a see here speak no evil poses for grandpa. Cause he taught me that. And was silly like a monkey. A bear with a shotgun. My best friend killed himself. No one saw it coming. I realized after he was gone. The only time I actually saw him happy was when he got a bear during hunting season. The entire rest of the time I knew him he was faking it. My tattoo artist did all of them and he doesn't even know what they mean. Cause I'd tear up every time. Just like I am writing this. Not a tattoo artist, but I have a butterfly with the breast cancer ribbon on my ankle for my girlfriend. She was diagnosed in February of this year, and is on the way to recovery after a double mastectomy, and I wanted to do something for her. Thank you for being there for her. Hope things continue to get better for you both. Hugs. Not a tattoo artist but I have a few tattoos. My most sentimental wholesome one is love you in my grandma's handwriting. From a birthday card. She had the most perfect cursive handwriting and I've always loved it. She's also the strongest person I know and during a really weak point of my life I got it tattooed on me. She has Parkinson's that started in her hands and has gradually gotten worse. She still has beautiful handwriting but it's changed. 
I hope to be half the mom grandmother woman she is and I have a part of her with me all the time to remind me of that. Not a tattoo artist. A drinking buddy is just a list of dates on his ribcage. I once asked what they were and as I suspected they were the death dates of friends. He did 6 tours overseas. Obligatory not a tattoo artist but I make sure all my tattoos are meaningful to me. My cousin died at age 17. I was 11. And she was an amazing girl with an awful autoimmune disease that meant she spent approximately 80% of her life indoors. She decided to make a change and raise money for a charity that would help kids like her and sold handmade cards, giving all proceeds to them. It was for the Forget Me Not Children's charity, now hospice, they finished building a few years after she passed. So I got the words forget me not on my foot as my first tattoo, in memory of her and all the good she did. My second tattoo is the butterfly from the game Life is Strange. It was the first video game me and my fiance bonded over. It rewired our relationship, which had been on a downward spiral. My third tattoo is a jigsaw piece, just above my ear. I've had so many issues with my mental health. I felt like I had a little piece missing. My fourth tattoo is in memory of my grandma who died last March. When I was leaving for university, she wrote me a note saying make your dreams come true. The tattoo artist copied her handwriting and placed some dot work in the Peter Pan stars around it. The November after my grandma died, my granddad passed away too. He and I used to sit and watch the robins outside his window, so it's a robin with open wings. Sprouting from the wings are red roses. These were my grandma's favorite flowers and my mum told me a story about how granddad had rose bushes and he would always give the single stem of the first bloom to my grandma and tell her how much he loved her. My friend David wanted to get his parents birth years on his knuckles. He was pretty drunk but I took him anyway. He has his mom's and dad's birth years now forever tattooed on his knuckles. They both died from different illnesses before he was even 21. He doesn't regret it and he cried hard when it was all over. Not an artist but immediately thought of it when I saw the title of the post. My best friend from my service days had his each of his children write their names on his arm when they were old enough to do it correctly. Ish. He would immediately go to the parlor and have the Aritz trace their handwriting, including the color the child did their name in. Not the artist, but the person tattooed. I've got a jackalope on my left thigh. It's my most sentimental tattoo. My dad used to run marathons when I was little. I didn't really understand what he was doing or why we were going to pick my dad up from the middle of nowhere all the time. I'd ask and he couldn't think of a good way to explain why he was running so much. So he eventually started telling me that he was spending time with his jackalope friend, Laurel, and would tell me about all their adventures. When I hit puberty, I went from being daddy's little girl to not being able to connect with my dad. It's not that we didn't get along, it's just that we had nothing in common. I joined my school's cross country team in 7th grade and completely fell madly in love with running. Suddenly my dad and I had something to connect over. Sure, it's mostly comparing running stats and talking about future races, but we finally had something to say to each other. After my first half marathon, I decided to get a jackalope tattoo. My parents don't live close to me, so it's nice to be able to have something that reminds me of all the great runs my dad has shared with me. Not an artist, but the artist that did my first tattoo, had a group of frat boys come in asking to get the Superman logo on their asses. He did it, not thrilled to be tattooing 10 plus guys asses, but turns out they had a buddy who was killed in an automotive incident that had the logo tattooed on his butt, a nice memorial. Not an artist but my grandfather passed in high school and he was the guy who kept the family together. I was always against permanent markings but it felt right getting his nickname for me tattooed across my chest in our language. I know someone who asked the coroner to make thumbprints from their mom after passing and then had it turned into tattoo with the bottoms overlapping to make shape of heart. Also, not a tattoo artist, but just got my first tattoo in July. It's the words, love your life in Tom Hiddleston's handwriting. It came from an interview he was giving, and was later written in a card for charity, then picked up by different fans who asked for it to be added to their autographs. It's on the inside of my hip which means I see it whenever I'm looking at the part of my body I am least happy with, 
belly, and it reminds me to make peace with myself and to work on the things with which I can't make peace. Since I got it over the summer, it meant foregoing some activities, like the beach and pool, while it healed. So it also reminds me that anything I want in life, my tattoo, may involve discomfort, hard decisions, foregoing one desire for another, and treating myself kindly sometimes, caring for the healing skin, but ultimately help me reach my goal, s. Not an artist but my dad got a tattoo of me and my sister's names is a rose because he loved us I am also guessing it's because we're the only children he's actually able to contact. Personal. Not a professional. Lost my mum at the start of the year so I've basically started my addiction to tattoos with sentimental tributes to her. A most amazing family oriented woman who was big on Sunday dinners with immediate family. Always the typical family favorite films on such as Short Circuit or The Goonies. It was then that I felt at my safest and the most whole. Watching those kind of films whilst my mum smothered us with her motherly duties. I don't know if this counts for this question. But whatever, my brother rolled his truck 4-5 times into a ditch, and he was extremely lucky to walk away from the wreck. After the wreck he went to a tattoo shop and got a stopwatch with angel wings on the sides of the watch with a scroll underneath the watch. The time on the stopwatch was the time he wrecked and on the scroll was the date he wrecked. He also got a semicolon on the web of his hand for suicide prevention. I'm not an artist, but I do have a story about my first tattoo. My grandmother passed away about 2 years ago from heart failure, so around her 2 year anniversary, I decided to get my first tattoo in her honor, a hummingbird with a halo, and a clover in its mouth, along with her birth and eat gear underneath. Hummingbirds used to be her favorite, she was an angel on earth and she died on Saint Patrick's Day. Nata but I have a cat on my thigh covering my self harm scares with the quote self care isn't selfish, few months down the line. Adopt a cat who matches the generic tattoo perfectly. Not a tattoo artist but I had one do a tattoo across the back of my shoulders that says keep your head held high with my dad's birth and death dates to remind myself of him. The tattoo artist was so kind and made it so beautiful that I smile a little bit every time I see it in the mirror. Not a tattoo artist. So my brother and his friend were both killed by a drunk driver. So a bunch of people got tattoos in honor of them. My brother's friend sister got his first and middle name tattooed onto her wrist because she was the one who named him. My brother's girlfriend has his portrait on her lower arm. All of my brother's friends got the same N as my brother because it's the first letter in the name of our town and they all were friends since elementary school. My brother was nothing but pride for where he was born and raised. My cousin has my brother's entire name on his chest. My mom's first tattoo was just his nickname in cursive. She later got her two turtles, one around my brother's name and one for my brother's stepson. One of my brother's friends said that my brother came to him in a dream saying that if you see a turtle, it's him. Crap you not. I know of three encounters and two of them happened to my brother's stepson. Me and my cousin are going to get a tattoo for my brother as soon as possible. It will be a turtle that my grandpa had painted on the wall at their old place. An Asian girl came inside the store and asked me to tattoo two cats cuddling on her arm. After the job was done she went outside the store and started petting my cats and let them crawl on her. She stayed there for about 15 minutes. I gave her the 50 bucks that she gave me back. I couldn't stop thinking about that ever since. Not my story, but one of my aunts. She had recently gotten off heroin and wanted to do something to help keep herself off. So she decided to get a small line tattooed on the inside of her wrist so whenever she feels like going back, she can look at it and remember how far she's gotten. One line for every year she's clean. And we're up to five. Gonna be six next month. Tattoo artists of Reddit. What's the worst mistake you've ever made? Did you tell your client? I married my high school girlfriend. Turns out she was cheating on me. And no, I did not tell any clients. It's none of their business. Mistakes happen. A decent artist can correct it and if the person doesn't notice, why tell? A friend of mine misspells a word or name. I don't remember, and didn't realize it until after. But in his defense it wasn't his fault. Before doing the tattoo he wrote the name on paper and had the person check to make sure it was correct. 
He then made a stencil and again made her check for accuracy and she signed off on it. He applied the stencil and had her check again to make sure she was happy with everything and she was. After it was finished she realized it was wrong but also realized it was on her. He fixed it later on somehow because he is a badass. But also realized it was on her. In a very real sense. My dad was a tattoo artist. His worst mistake was believing some girl was 18 and giving her a tramp stamp. The girl ended up being 16 and her parents had found out about it somehow and got very upset with his polar. Update. After further inquiry I learned that the polar my dad was working in then had like 4 people there at the time and was in a lower end part of the city. And she did in fact have a fake it and it was good enough to fool his supervisor who gave him the go ahead to do it. He did quit his job at that place and move on to a better polar but this was in 2002 and he doesn't do it anymore. I did that when I was 15. I was such a massive dong when I was 15. Nobody found out at least. Sorry your dad got in trouble for it. I got a Chinese symbol tattooed on my belly so I suppose I got what I deserved. I'm an apprentice and my biggest mistake was letting all of my friends know. I'm constantly asked if I can tattoo them or if they can get a tattoo for free from me. It's like asking an artist if they can draw you. I'm not the artist. And the client. I have lyrics tattooed on my bicep and my artist spelled your as your. I didn't notice it at first. Probably from the adrenaline but when I washed it the evening I caught it. Called the shop and explained. Thankfully they had a laser removal clinic within the shop itself. The tattoo shop ate the fees for removal. As expected tbh. And 3.5 years later my tattoo finally says your lol. Your tattoo artist simply couldn't suppress his pirate origin. When my friend first bought his tattoo gun he brought it with him to hang out in our other friend's house. Everyone wanted a tattoo. So he gave it to them. He didn't change needles. Lots of infected tattoos that month. No one complained. They all knew what they were getting into. I was lucky I didn't want one at the time. And my friend became really good at making them after a few years. A guy I know went in to get east coast tattooed across his back. He got east coast and wasn't too thrilled when somebody mentioned that wasn't how it was supposed to be spelled like a week later. East coast. I have a good story. Back in the 80s my friend went to get a tattoo at another friend's older brother's house. His name was Tommy. Finding a tattoo artist back then wasn't as easy as it is now. Most times it was always someone you knew. Anyhow as Tommy was inking my friend's arm he was drinking and even went back to get a second six pack while inking my friend. After hours went by, Tommy stops the stares at the tattoo and says, that's a fricked up tattoo. We all burst out laughing as he kept saying it over and over. My friend is now 50 and still has that skull with a dagger through it. Comma still has that skull with a dagger through it. That's a fricked up tattoo. My ex was a tattooist and was just starting out. Some dude wanted circumcision tattooed on his chest pretty big, she did it and realized she'd tattooed circumcision. That's still probably better than actually having circumcision spelled correctly to be fair. I had only been tattooing for about a year or so when I had a newly fathered young man come in asking for a cancer zodiac symbol to represent his baby daughter. He seemed like a nice guy and we chatted while I tattooed him. I was about 3 quarters of the way done when his wife arrived and stuck her head in my room to see how it was going. She takes one look at the tattoo and says, you know she's a Gemini, right? He gets the biggest oh crap look in his eyes but I remain calm and assure him that I got this. Through some creative ingenuity, I successfully managed to turn that cancer sign into a Gemini symbol. He was so happy and even I couldn't believe I had pulled that one off. That was around 15 years ago and I'm still proud of that moment. This guy came in, and he was a pretty big fuck boy. One of those white guys probably raised in upper class suburbs who tries to act all thug and all. So he comes in and asks me for this tattoo on his back, near the left shoulder. I get it all done and realize my mistake as he's walking out. I freaking screwed up so bad. He asked for a 13 but I drew a 31. I bet in his own mind he was the dopest trip though. I'll answer for my complete sea of a tattooist. Fricked up shading the nose on my angel so her nose is pointing the wrong way to her face. Never told me. Being red raw I couldn't see how bad it was. 
Traveled 200 miles back home to realize a few days later and got told it's not his problem because I left the shop. 300 pounds down the pan because it's actually aged badly and the quality of the art is quite poor. Definitely going to need a picture of this. Biggest mistake was actually going ahead to toing a camel on a dude's big toe. You could see the regrets in his eyes when he showed his friends and they all started howling with laughter. Really shoulder talked him out of that one. The joke got old super fast. If he wasn't getting it for a laugh then he must take camel toes pretty dang seriously. Okay, so I'm neither a tattoo artist nor a client, but I think I saw a fairly major fuck up. In this office building where I work, there's a coffee stand downstairs manned by a very nice barista guy. One day I noticed, it was hard not to, because it spread across his whole forearm. A strange tattoo on his arm which said Nuncum Pitrosum Semper Ingredindum. I don't pretend to be a Latin major or anything, but this just didn't look right to me, so I asked. Sorry Edward, but what does this mean he replied, never back, always forward, it's Latin, my do so I muttered, yes I know it's Latin, but, long story short, the actual saying is, nunquam retrosum, semper prosum, for whatever reason, however, in the Russian part of the internet, and this is all happening in Russia, this mutilated version of the translation has taken hold. So the guy's walking around with a tattoo on his arm that basically says never peck, always ingredient, or something to that effect, and I don't have the heart to tell him. Life is pain. Google Translate shows both versions mean never backward, always forward though. <laughs> Had her old friend tattoo his area code on himself. He wrote a wrong area code the idiot he is, and got in trouble with a local gang and had to get it removed 6 months later lol. Client here, and telling this because it pee me off, I was with my friend watching her getting tattooed a beautiful flower on her upper arm. I scheduled a time and discussed ideas with the artist of what I wanted, basically, Norwegian animals on my arm only lines, no shading or coloring. We agreed on time and price, 4000 knock. I paid a deposit, and we went home. About a 3 hour drive one way. I knew my friend had gotten updates on the sketch before appointment, but I heard nothing for 2 weeks. Then I mailed her, saying how exited I was and asked if she had sketched anything. I got no reply. Waited a few days and asked again, nothing. Asked the day before just to confirm the appointment, nothing. We still drove there and showed up 15 minutes early, and waited. After 20 minutes she comes out from her workspace, being a bit apologetic and she will be 1h late because she thought it was going to be a much smaller tattoo than it turned out to be. That was fine. We went to a cafe and ate some food and returned 1h later. 2 hours later, she was done with her client. She said she needed to eat and went off go grab a bite. 30 minutes later returned with food and began eating. Now she tells me she hadn't sketched anything for my tattoo. Nothing. This was something she could do in her sleep. After watching 3.5 hours I agreed to let her draw with a marker and he'll decide from there. They actually turned out good and we started. I was gonna get a sleeve, but after 2h she told me she had to go. Her boyfriend was waiting with dinner and we could finish at another time. She wanted 3000 knock for doing 1 stroke 3 of my tattoo. At this point I was too tired and frustrated I just agreed and we left. Did not return to finish the job and noticed several mistakes on the last animal she tattooed. She was not apologetic at any point other than a quick sorry for going to be late. She was very full of herself and acted like nothing was her fault. I left an honest review on her website and google maps. I never recommend her, and she acts like it was my fault for blaming her bad organization. Ex tattoo artist. Not quite a mistake but I once tattooed a huge portrait of my fellow co-worker's baby on his chest. Did a dang good job too. I usually didn't like doing that kind of personal stuff. Names of significant others etc. But would if it was Somon's kid, parent, or sibling. Two days later, co-worker's wife is caught cheating and informs him that his one year old daughter is not really his. It's been 10 years and he has yet to get it covered. Not a tattoo artist. But I was a bit of an a shat once about a friend's tattoo. She had just got a beautiful sleeve done that morning which included a large clock. She mentioned the clock showed the time her daughter was born. And happened to call out that time specifically as she was telling me. 
I immediately noticed the hour hand was in the wrong spot. Like the time was supposed to be 1.15 but the hour hand was closer to 2 o'clock. Without really considering how it would make her feel, I blurted it out right away. And watched her just die inside. She's a self-admitted perfectionist so it drove her crazy to know that. Thankfully the artist was able to fix it. It was a good lesson for me that there's a difference between being right and doing the right thing. I mean I still would have told her, but at least give her a day to enjoy it and maybe tell her in a different way. Not an artist, but the client. For my first tattoo, I trusted a friend's tattoo artist to do it for me. I get a rose in color, for reasons. He inks all the black lines and it looks good. He gets to the color, and fills in the falling petals in green instead of the clear red in the picture I sent him, which he had on his work table for reference. The leaves were clearly different from the petals. Luckily, I caught it so he could fix it before I left, but it was a pretty big mistake when the entire tattoo has three colors black, red, and green, and the majority was black. But he also scarred me, so I won't be going back. My friend got a huge color piece on his shoulder. The artist kept asking him if all of the colors looked right. Turned out the artist was colorblind. Looks great though. All the colors are perfect. I love bad tattoos so much. We used to have this girl come around the shop who had the most horrific trailer park tattoos ever. One said, country girl. True Shakespeare fans only. A guy I know tattooed himself while he was drunk his plan was to write kickstart my heart but his drunk butt wrote story. I do tattoos on myself I got about 20 and they are all trash I did some words backwards in the mirror but one time I got halfway through a tattoo to realize I spelled it completely wrong. Like not even close. Why would you ever do that? As recipient, not artist, my great granddad was covered in tattoos from World War 2 and decided to get a huge family crest across his stomach, but realized afterwards it was the mirror image of it. Didn't stop him whipping off his top in his 90s though to show them to us as kids. He was badass. Dang this post made me check my only writing tattoo just be sure, even if it's literally in front of me cause it's on my forearm and even if I've had it for a couple of years. All good though. Not a tattoo artist but I've seen tattoos that look like they gave their 8 year old the equipment and said go ham. This one guy I saw was trying to get a picture of his wife tattooed on and the nose looked like a DCK. I was a tattoo artist in the 90s before I got my MFA. Huge mistakes are really hard to make tattooing. Lay people have this mistaken idea that there can be an oops moment. Like dropping your machine and drawing a line down someone's back. This just doesn't happen. The most common mistakes are misspellings. But it is an honestly extremely boneheaded error. And is on both the artist and the client. Now, tiny mistakes are made often. Slightly overshadowing. Getting a color slightly wrong on first try, and remixing. Slight life work mistakes. That is just, however, the nature of drawing in general. It's no different on someone's skin, in the creation of a portrait. For instance, you build up value slowly, just as you would making a drawing on paper. In the end, these little mistakes are invisible, and simply part of the process. Also, this is the most common question I got from curious and ignorant clients. If I was feeling smart as see, I would answer with we don't make mistakes, and leave it to that. If it was a serious query, I would explain what I explained above. Tattoos take a long, long time, so mistakes are not common. I mean, there are crappy tattooists who just make bad work, but that's not really a mistake. <laughs> Client, not artist. I went to a very well known shop in a southern city after researching artists for months. I wanted a white tattoo and my artist was particularly known for his amazing work in the medium. My tattoo is a simple shape, line work only, no fill, and it's partially blown out. Half the tattoo has a deep white shadow next to the line. It looks terrible. I had a biker who wanted a skull but instead I did Kermit the Frog. Guy kept saying he wanted a skull but I just went ahead and drew Kermit the Frog. I arm wrestled my cousin who's stronger than me, and I forced myself to win and I won. Now I have cubital tunnel syndrome from the pressure I applied on my elbow during that match. Tattoo artists of Reddit, what was the weirdest most disturbing tattoo a customer wanted? 
When I worked as a tattoo artist, a guy wanted us to tattoo his name on his infant baby, because as he put it, she's trying to say that's not my son we threatened to call the guard a because what the actual heck. We wouldn't tattoo anyone under the age of 18, even with parental consent, and we certainly wouldn't tattoo a baby. I had to laugh when I saw the episode of Archer where he and the baby get tattoos. It was a grim reminder. I have a friend that tattooed on herself the word spite onto her leg when she was 14 but anytime she wears socks it looks like it says spit. It looking like spit is the least of the problems with that tattoo. I was getting tattooed and one of the guys at the shop refused to tattoo a couple flies around a girl's vagina and inner thigh. You. I have a buddy that has his anus tattooed and got it when he was high on shrooms. It's an eyeball. God help whichever tattoo artist had to do that one. I guess you could say they've seen some crap. Not a tattoo artist but the guy I went to for many years once told me that he had a customer come in, 20 years old and completely sober and very serious, wanting him to tattoo birds flying out of her vagina up to her lower stomach. He told her he wasn't willing to tattoo genitalia to get out of it and she said okay, I'll just take an infinity sign on the back of my neck instead. He saved her from a lot of awkward questions and a lot of regret later in life. I'm not sure anyone with an infinity symbol is necessarily indemnified against regret, but it's a step down from virginia buds anyway. I got a tattoo of Dudley Bob on my butt. To those unaware, Dudley Bob is the character from the episode of Spongebob where Spongebob finds a pencil and draws a copy of himself. The copy becomes alive and ends up being evil. While I was getting it I asked the tattoo artist so what's the dumbest tattoo you've ever given someone? His reply, honestly? Probably this one. I've had it for a few years and have no regrets. Dudley Bob will live on underneath my boxes for years to come. Mihoi Minoy. A friend of mine and I recently discussed getting Dudley Bob tattooed on ourselves. We ended up getting cheese instead. But I still love the idea of having Dudley Bob done. So that's awesome. Not a tattoo artist. But I asked one this question while watching him tattoo my best friend. He said that a guy came in and asked for Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street on the bottoms of his big toes, one on each foot. That's cute. Obligatory not a tattoo artist, but I did a series of renovations at a buddy's shop over a couple years. I was something like a skilled groupie. Strangest request I saw honored. Guy comes in, looking like a goth thug. He says his mom just died recently and he wants to get a portrait done in her honor. He pulls out an 8x10 black and white nudie pic of his mom. I heard my buddy ask a question like, was your mom a burlesque dancer the guy, deadpan, says, nah, man, nah, she was a stay at home mom, the finished piece was actually amazing, but clearly that family was a bit different than mine, strangest request I saw turned away, guy came in with a small group, maybe 4 or 5 people in their early 20s, he wanted a few disembodied dongs, floating over a naked woman, spraying her with CM. That guy had a giant dong tattooed on his forearm. My face got a workout contorting through several facial expressions in rapid succession. Hive plus on the shaft of their penis. Apparently they felt it would qualify as informed consent and avoid bringing it up in conversation. But alas women do not see WIs inside their vaginas. I hope he refused. Not an artist. But the artist I see said he has a guy come in and get naked Disney princesses tattooed all over his body. Like think topless little mermaid or naked Pocahontas. Then gets upset when people complain about them being visible when kids are around. My brother is a tattoo artist and refused to tattoo two small pot leaves above my other brother's thumbs. He later got it done by a friend. They look terrible and he wishes he had never done it. He also got a ski mask tattooed behind his ear. My brother said yes to that one because of how bad the pot lease turned out. Your other brother is a few more tattoos and some hair die away from being a SoundCloud rapper. Finally, a post I can comment on. I had a pair of Dominatrix sisters ask me to tattoo their live-in slave for his birthday as a surprise. It was their names in Chinese. At the base of his dong, they had specifically requested me as I fit into the fetish category of the slave. Being an East Asian lady tattooer, I was to be paid triple for my time, but had one request that I tattoo him at their studio, dressed as a dominatrix while he was tied up bondage style. When I got to their location, 
It was really sketchy as it was in a random warehouse in a bad part of town. But once I walked through the red door, it was very tastefully decorated with cages hanging from the ceiling along with the chandeliers. They had me dress up in their clothes as we were the same size, while the slave got ready in his gear, none the wiser. When he was ready, after some sort of ceremony where they whipped him for a while, they told him his birthday surprise. He was so excited he was erect by the time I had my station ready. They used to be nurses so they had the sterile equipment already, hence an easy setup. The ladies tied him up on a padded table and stretched out the area to be tattooed by weighing down his dong and balls with rope and weights. After the tattoo was done, they thanked me for my services, paid me triple along with a hefty tip, and I was on my way. All in all, 10 stroke 10 would do it again. This is probably the coolest story it. Not a tattoo artist, but I went to school with a girl that got a human heart tattooed on her butthole and it says eat your heart out. Very interesting. Not a tattoo artist but a health inspector that inspects tattoo piercing establishments. I had to investigate a complaint about a mother trying to get her 15 year old daughter's nipples tattooed. Said they didn't look right. No one fortunately would do it because they weren't comfortable looking at a 15 year old's breasts but she said she'd just go somewhere else. I had her info from the tattoo place and turned it over to DCS. I used to intern as a body pisser. My mentor was telling me some stories. One day, this guy comes in and asks for his fiance's name in big letters surrounded by hearts on his neck. It was supposed to be a matching tattoo and his fiance would be getting hers after she left work. So as the guy is talking about his fiance, he mentions her name. Everyone in the shop is dead silent. The fiance is the crazy chick my mentor was FWB with. They had such kinky sex. They had a legal document drafted that if something happens to the other during sex, the other person is not legally responsible for it. Fear already halfway through the tat. They have a small meeting of whether to finish it and tell him, or just tell him before he's in too deep with the tat. They decide to tell him. My mentor takes him outside and is like I'm sorry, dude. Your girl is messing around on you and shows him proof in their private, very sexual, messages. Guy is in tears, but goes back inside to finish the tat. He leaves and a few days later calls the shop and yells at the owner to let him know that their body pisser is forcing women to use sex as payment for thigh piercings. Owner says frick off. Tattoo artist here. While on a canoe trip with my friends we met a man who was enjoying the river on his kayak. We were all stopped at a small shore and the man commented on how many tattoos we all had. My friends all instinctively pointed to me and said, Shh said tattoo artist this is not a thing that I like people to know in my leisure time because I then get sucked into a lengthy conversation about the person's cousin's brother's aunt who watched Ink Masters once and wants a tattoo. Anyway, my friends knew this and did it anyway and the man started telling me that he wants his wife to get a tattoo. The idea he began to tell me was nothing I would ever want a tattoo, or ever would, but it's the closest I've ever come to the weirdest tattoo I've ever done. He described a butterfly, on her vagina? Pretty much he explained that when she were to pull apart the lips of her vagina the inside she wanted tattoo like butterfly wings. So her vagina looked just like a butterfly when spread apart. That was the most awkward conversation of my life, and my friends enjoyed every second of it. That is some serious catnip LSD cocktail tall. Being a lady it must have been even more uncomfortable for you. Not a tattoo artist but walked by a guy at Coachella who had a rib tattoo of a guy jacking off standing atop a pile of dead bodies. How the herp is doing? Not a tattoo artist but, I worked with a lady who had a picture of herself on the cross tattooed on her upper arm. Oh and the tattoo self was naked, and she was happy cause he made my tea bigger on it. I, first off, all the questions. Not an artist but the guy I went to told me about someone who repeatedly came into the shop and only ever wanted sort of natural marks on his body circled. Nipples were circled. Freckles were circled. Moles were circled. So the guy just had loads of circles of various sizes on his body. One day he shaved off his beard, found a spot or mole on his chin and came in that day to have it circled. If I recall correctly the artist eventually turned him away and refused to circle anymore. My first thought was, wow, that would be a great way to check for skin cancer, if it outgrows the circle, see a dermatologist. 
While I was getting tattooed I asked my artist the same question. She told me once a guy walked in and asked for a full back piece of a demon bending an old nun over and raping her, and for the nun to have huge feet. It was the only tattoo she ever refused. Good choice. Everyone knows nuns only have small feet. LOL a couple got Kevin Bacon's face on a piece of bacon on their asses. It was actually awesome though tbh and they were super nice people. Honestly, probably the best couples tattoo. Still good if it doesn't work out, but dang good if it does. My tattoo artist once shared this story of this girl who wanted a rose tattooed around her anus. He refused, naturally, and she whined for a bit before asking him to instead tattoo sweet little thing across her lower back. Tramp stamp style. He again refused and kicked her out of the shop. In his words, he wasn't going to deal with that level of crazy for that long. Obligatory not a tattoo artist, but earlier today my best friend got a tattoo of E.T. doing a line of coke off his long finger. She also has a tattoo of Chinese symbols which literally translates to cheesy garlic bread. This chick memes. Went on a date with an artist, asked her this question. Her answer is a favorite story of mine to tell now. A girl came in on her 18th birthday. She was dressed super rich and talked like the most dense basic white girl you've ever seen. We asked her what she wanted done and she says, I want a tattoo on my butthole. Comma what do you want there? I want words around my butthole. Comma okay what do you want it to say? I want it to say Dom's butt s. And she got a butthole tattoo that day. It wasn't done by the woman I was dating, but by someone said at that shop. Not me personally but I know my ex stepdad's mother is a renowned tattooist in the UK and she is an immigrant. A guy came in wanting her to tattoo frick off packies on his back. She declined. Guy in my town did a touch up on a holocaust survivor. One of the guys I served with, they were from a really fricked up area of the south, had a client come in to have his SS tattoo touched up in the 70s. He did it and they turned the check into the FBI. Caught a war criminal that day. Another story was a guy that had all these weird names he wanted tattooed on his inner thigh. Turns out they were the names of several H that had been murdered and his dad was able to call the cops. Some of the names were for people that hasn't even been reported missing. Guy never got caught. Not an artist but as an eavesdropping customer. A lady who was 8 months pregnant. I still have 4 weeks it's fine. Wanted her baby's due date down her spine. What if the baby was early or late? After some back and forth with the artist saying he was not comfortable with her being so close to due, they came to an agreement to put it on the side of her neck. Definitely took my mind off my own session. I don't have any weird disturbing stories, but my co-worker tattooed the inside of a guy's dong once. The guy had his penis split down the head and he wanted it bright orange, with either a butterfly or a ladybug. He came in with it pre-wrapped in plastic filled with numbing cream. My friend said that, when they first got started, he was trying to get a grip on the guy's unit and slipped. As a reaction, he quickly tried to grab it again and his thumb went pretty deep inside the dude's, what's the scientific term? Don't hole. He also tattooed that his house around a girl's butthole. After 20 years, you get some weird opportunities, I guess. So far the most repulsive. After scrolling through the thread, there are surprisingly a lot of anus tattoos. Either I am really conservative, or I don't look a lot of people's anuses. In all fairness, I'd consider myself pretty opposite of conservative and there's no way I'd get a tattoo on or near my butthole. I'm not a tattoo artist, but my mom was in the early 2000s. She spoke and wrote Chinese very well, and she would tell me stories about people who got tattoos with the wrong meaning. Please share. Not a tattoo artist but heard this story last night at a party. One dude of my family is a firefighter. He'd take shower fully naked with other firefighter except one dude that would always come with underpants. They asked him why so and the guy replied that he got a tattoo on his butt that he wasn't proud of. He didn't want it to show it until one day he felt confident enough to take the shower fully naked and reveal the tattoo he was so ashamed of. Turn out it was a dong doing skate. TLTR. Someone have a dong doing skateboard tattooed on his butt. I have realistic nipples tattooed on my butt cheeks. The artist had a page of about 50 different pictures of nipples. I picked the ones I wanted and haven't regretted my crack rack since. You'll regret it if you go to prison. 
not an artist but my best friend is. He sent me a snap of a girl with a Batman logo above her vagina with the quote the Bat Cave. I immediately knew who it was and died of laughter. Now every man in town has visited the Bat Cave. Obligatory not a tattoo artist but. I got chat crap get banged tattooed on my butt. The tattoo artist couldn't stop laughing and ended up taking a picture of the tattoo. He didn't post the picture online. He just kept it to show to his mates. He also said it was the funniest tattoo he'd ever seen, or tattooed. I can't remember, so I got a weird sense of pride from that. I always heard talk crap get hit but never this version. Not an actual tattoo artist, but I am a henna artist. A long time ago, when Obama was first running for president, I had an acquaintance ask me to henna Obama's face on his butt cheek. It was weird haha. Interestingly, I avoid discussing politics with clients. So I never figured out if the guy liked Obama or hated him. Wish I could find a picture of it haha. <laughs> On the flip side, I have tattoos that, I'm sure, if my tattoo artist knew about this post, would end up here. I studied lived in Japan for a while and really wanted to get a traditional Arazumi Tibori hand pokes tattoo. Went to a few tattoo conventions and finally found an artist I liked who worked in the city I lived in. But he insisted he didn't do Tibori. Lots of artists told me that, though I suspected they weren't telling me the truth. I resigned myself to just getting a normal tattoo, but when I showed up, I could see a guy in the back getting the traditional style so I said that's what I wanted and that's what I got. What I wanted was two Kiku, Japanese chrysanthemums, one on each of my breasts, with my nipple in the middle. It took a while to explain this, since my Japanese was crap and the artist spoke very limited English. He agreed, and freehand drew each one, though he obviously thought I was crazy. It took forever, like 14 hours over 2 sessions. Hand poked is a much slower technique, and was, honestly, the most painful experience I've ever had, and I recently had a kid with no pain meds. Literally, excruciating, but they turned out great and I love them still. That was nearly 15 years ago and they still look great. Japanese chrysanthemums. One on each of my breasts. I recently had a kid. Tell your partner they get to make dad jokes when the kid inevitably eats a flower. It's a tattoo that I want. I want made in Japan on my butt, in red. My parents met there during Vietnam and I was conceived. I've asked about it, then chicken out. My tattoo guy told me a story of some guy who got his own name tattooed on his penis. In my head his name was Richard lol. A friend of mine got a boomhoa from King of the Hill, with a Goku Super Saiyan 3 hair. He still loves it and to be honest so do I. Better than getting Bill tattooed on the back of your head, I tell I all it. Dude came in, got daughter's name on his butt, his daughter was in the room, holding his hand while I did it. Sometimes it takes a eye idle while to feel out what situations you don't want to enter into as a tattooer. Not a tattoo artist but my artist told me about a friend of his who blacked out his nipples and a guy who had a dream in which he had lego figures as thumbs so he got them tattooed. A friend of a friend was blackout drunk and decided to get disrespectful down his left calf and freak down his right calf. I'm sure the tattooist tried to talk him out of it but money is a heck of a drug. I'm surprised they did it. Every time I've gone into a tattoo shop, for piercings and tattoos, various shops, I've had to sign a consent waiver that included signing off that I was not high or drunk. My artist always told me the story of when someone got a bloody metal hanger with the words mama tried on their back. Another separate story. Person got Abraham Lincoln on her back, like full back piece. I had joked that whomever had sex with her doggy style would feel like John Wilkes Booth when he came across her back. There was a group of adults that walked into my tattoo shop for one guy to get a tattoo. At the last second they changed their choice from a baby coming out of his butt to a dog on one of his butt cheeks. Definitely lost a bet. Not a tattoo artist but a friend of mine got a tattoo of himself smiling and giving two thumbs up on his ass cheek. Why? God knows. We had a guy who came into the shop monthly to get the word whore tattooed on him. Always in different sizes and font script. Eventually we caved and asked what it was about. We assumed he just had a girlfriend partner. Turns out he'd misheard the name Thor and claimed to be a Norse pagan. We tried to tell him about the correct spelling even showing him in books and online. 
he wasn't having it, I saw him a month or so ago, with whore tattooed on his forehead. My Norse pagan butt just cringed so hard I imploded. This guy walked in wanting a vagina tattoo on his butt and while I was tattooing it he freaking shouted and it got everywhere and I asked him to leave but he wanted it to get done so I asked him if he can got to the bathroom and clean himself up. And he got up and he left a streak of crap on the floor. It was green BTW and we had carpet floors at the time. And when he got back he finished and never talked about that again. Until now. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.